We're back. It's time for the 2024 Urban Nerd Con. Join us in Atlanta, Georgia, April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel. Special guests include Underworld creator Kevin Grievous, Gary Gray from Fairly Odd Parents, from Nickelodeon, Giovanni Samuels, the Science Machine Michael Green, the Sci Fi Sisters, and from Spaceballs and Star Trek Voyager, Tim Russ. Hi, I'm Tim Russ. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia for the Urban Nerd Con. Our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone con. I'll see you there. Live long and prosper. Visit TheUrbanNerdCon.net to get your buy one, get one free badges before the price increases. Remember, our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone's con. See you there. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another live episode of the ONG Strike Zone on a beautiful Wednesday night. Brian Fulford, Marcus Green, and Eddie Kane, I mean, Kelvin Roaster <laughs> jumping in, joining us. Eddie Kane Jr., or Eddie, Eddie Kane the third. We like to leave Eddie Kane Jr. to Kofi. Maybe Eddie Kane the third over here. Uh, Marcus, uh, while we let Kelvin get his situation together how you doing tonight i'm doing good doing good a little weary but uh you still grinding at the job the the day one job they still they still putting you to work yeah at least through the middle of april at least through the end of april i heard that sigh that sigh of yeah (laughs) (laughs) that was real boy i tell you what that was real oh man uh well hey you know Brighter days are ahead, Marcus. Brighter days are ahead. Uh, Kelvin, you're looking kind of sporty there. Uh, how you doing this evening, man? What, what what you got going on there? Man, I'm 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 struggling. But Marcus, do not let the man put his foot on your neck. <laughs> Power to the people. <laughs> I got your I got your back, brother. CMB, right. CMB. We all we got. That's right. <laughs> Y'all doing good, but Brian doing well. You looking country club fresh, country club fresh, boy. I, I, look at that. Was that a cardigan, a polo? What? What is that? What is that gear? Man, l- l- legacy history. I think it's pride. called a, yeah. it called a rugby shirt. A rugby shirt. Look at. Mm. I think that's boy. what it's called. I don't know what it's yeah. called, man. You know, <laughs> you, you, you put it. Hey, you stick a, a rattle on it. Uh, uh you know that that that, that that logo. Hey. I, I bought. I'm getting it. it. It's done. So <laughs> uh, you know, that reminds me. I wanna I wanna I want us to going into this third year now. We gotta figure out a way how to capitalize on all these or capitalize it and promote all these great vendors. I, I'm thinking maybe like a vendor of the month kind of idea. Yeah, yeah or, you know, but just saying like every month. Bring them on. Let's do a show. I, I, I agree with you. I'm with you. Well, I, 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 instead of bringing them all on, I'm saying like every month we have a particular vendor. Maybe we we can work with them, be an affiliate. We send people, they give us a code, and maybe people who who listen to the show and buy merch for that particular month can get maybe a, a little discount. Um, you know, just something right. to promote them. You know, something to, to help <clears throat> help us. Uh, but 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 all in the Monetize. spirit of uh, yeah. promote, yeah, monetizing it and promoting uh, all these great gear, you know, this great gear that's out there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Agreed. So um, agree. Love the idea. Yeah. 
All mm-hmm. right, cool. We, we'll yeah. start working on that. Um, I, have, um, I have my, I think, what do they call that on Twitter? A list? I have a oh, list of yeah. about seven or eight that I follow. So That's where we need to start, Marcus. We, we need to start with that and hit one up at a time, maybe send a letter out to all of them and kind of just, uh, just go from there and say, hey, we'd like to be an affiliate sponsor for the month, you know, and, and kind of work with you on some, some unique gear or some something, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I, I think uh, it'd well, be a, we, have, we have some contacts and of course we can always uh, talk with Ms. Thompson and get that uh, list of vendors. And I is on the, uh, the website for uh, um, our vendor who uh, like our license vendor to CLC. Yeah. Yeah. Now the one thing um, with my list is that it's mostly apparel, but we have so much more than that. So we don't want to narrow our focus to just things we can wear, but this other FAMU paraphernalia and um, purchase uh, items and collect. No, I'm right there. I'm right there with you. Um, yeah, right there with you. Uh, all right, so. <clears throat> today's episode of the ONG Strike Zone. Hey, before I get into talking about that, everybody do me a favor. All, all of you who jumped in early, wherever you're watching us at, whether you're watching on Facebook, whether you're watching us on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button or the like button, however you're watching them. Say hello to our friends watching us on Instagram. Uh, those watching us on X, whether it be on our, um, our uh, ONG Strike Zone uh, or the Black College Sports Network. We are a part of the Black College Sports Network, uh, which is a part of Jericho Broadcast Network's parent company. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, we appreciate you. But more importantly, you, you do us a solid if you hit that thumbs up button and, and, and get a chance. Go ahead and share the show. You know, go ahead and let your people know that you're watching the show. Let you know, and, and, and let us know where you're from. Let us know, just like uh, Gail, check in from Cleveland. Cleveland, this is for you. Good to see you. What's up, Miss Gail? Man, you sound like you on an airplane with Puffy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. See, yeah, you. Yeah, let's you not start that one. My track with that one. I'm like, whoa, back up. I'm gonna you be like, to, I'm gonna yeah, be like put, Fitty. I'm gonna be like Fitty. Say, <laughs> I don't mess with no pub parties. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you do that? Yeah, I don't mess with no pub party. I'm, that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. That's why I was always down with the West Coast. Uh, anyway, hey, um, <laughs> right. Let's go. Man, look, let, let's do a uh, basketball-heavy show today. Uh, we got our good friend of the program, Coach Erica Cromarty from over at FAMU DRS, a.k.a. known as? The High. The High. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you for being ready, Marcus. See? There you go, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> Way to be ready, Marcus. I love it. Uh, of course, she's the head women uh, multi-state uh, championship coach over at the FAMU DRS. We're going to bring her on. We're going to talk uh, hoops. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, things going on with her uh, and the program. Uh, also, you know, get a good feel of this women's college basketball tournament. I mean, um, not just uh, it, it's a good week. The last week was a good week for HBCU programs. Um, yeah, uh, we, I believe we still, uh, yeah, we still have one. We still have one in that's still playing postseason. Is A and T still playing? Yeah, A and T is still playing. Mm-hmm. They're still in it, still alive. So we'll talk about just uh, you know uh, college basketball, and then uh, in hour two, we're gonna we're gonna really break down the men's basketball program. Um. A lot of interesting angles, but we got to understand the history of this program, especially over the last 40 years. I mean, man, I, well, no, let me take that back. It's longer. Is it 40? Yeah, about 43 years now, since 1980. Um, it's, 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 whoo, I tell you, but, uh, it's dark. It's dark. It is dark. It is dark. There, there, <laughs> it's very dark when you look at it from a macro perspective. And, um, uh, Man, I'll tell you, and we've got some interesting candidates. Uh, no shortage of people interested in this job, but we're going uh, to. Now, are those people who have expressed interest or names that we like? Uh, both, 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 okay. both. both. I, I do know Kelvin knows for a yeah. fact. I know for a fact. Um, 
and, and then there's and then there's a little bit of both. Like I said, there is a little bit of both. Uh, everybody's got a list, you know. I I think when I put it out there, and we'll talk about the poll. I put out a, a Twitter poll and a just some feelers to kind of see, you know, what what uh, Rattler Nation or the or the people who follow us where they and man, I tell you, just all kinds of names and just ideas and thoughts. So, uh, you know, we'll we'll talk about that, but. Um, Let's get into doing the roll call real quick before we get into the Rattler Roundup of the great, the greatness of our FAMU athletic programs over the weekend. And uh, we started off with none other than our man Bull checking in first in. What's up, Good Bull? To Good to see you, Bull. Uh, Jimmy Matt jumping in as well. Any Rattlers in the Bull house? Bull, Bull jumped in before we even logged in. He did. He did. Bull, Bull was in. If you the timestamp, Bull was like, "Man, let me go ahead and pull this up and get ready, get the popcorn ready, get the drinks ready." Man, I, I see you, Bull. We see you sitting there on the recliner, chilling, watching the show. That's love, man. Appreciate you, uh, Melissa Wilson. Checking in. Duh. Amen. All right. Good to see you, Melissa. Uh, Meredith. Good to see you, Meredith. Uh, there you go. Ken, family, checking in. In the incognito account. Uh, Mary305. Good to see you, Mary. <laughs> Hello. Good to see you, Hollow. Way to go. Good to see you, Rattler. Uh, Hello, Offer. Good to see you. Uh, <laughs> Hello, Hollow. Demetra Offer. Good to see you. Um, I know you, I saw Demetra in the uh, in the chats, uh, 220 Club this afternoon. Boy, we'll talk about that. We'll, we will get to it. So I see some people already 38 hot, still, still hot, still hot. I, I'm like, damn, I was, how long has it been? Y'all don't let it ruin your dinner too. That's all I'm going to say. It might've ruined your lunch, but don't let it ruin your dinner. I must've missed it. Oh yeah. You missed it. It was good. Good stuff. Good, good, good TV. That's all I'm going to tell you. Uh, Duval in the house. Good to see you, Marvin. Thank you for checking in with us. Good. Uh, oh, Steve, there you go. Yeah. Hey. Hey, look, I, and Mr. Campbell, good to see you. But look, I, I'll tell you like I'm this. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait, Mr. Campbell. <laughs> we're going to wait. We'll wait. We, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Hey, look. Hey, if you, I played the I played the Powerball. Oh. Powerball is what, a billion dollars? If I, I can play the Powerball. Won it. Huh? Somebody won it. No, that, not, the, that, not the whole thing. That was Mago. That was Mago, wasn't it? Oh, okay. Won Somebody won one point one billion dollars. I saw yeah. somewhere up in New Jersey. In Jersey, yeah. Oh, that was the that was the mega. Yeah. Did somebody hit that. Yep. Damn. All right. Well, that's all right. Powerball's almost there as well. So it's the anyway, night, right? my, my point was, hey, if I could play a, a a lotto ticket, I sure enough can spend a few bucks on a raffle ticket. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, good to see you, Aston. Thanks for checking in. Scalability. Uh, the return. Mm, the return is I, different. Purse, I know it is. A billion. I know. Purse, a billion. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Jay Hunter, yes, uh, we did get a chance to see it. We'll talk about it here coming up. Ashley C., good to see your family. Thanks for checking in. Tony, what up, brother? Good to see nah. you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Tony, I'm going to get to yeah, your you question. You got to comment here. a little bit later. Yeah, I know. I, I started. Yeah, I started. I started. <laughs> uh, what up, Ragler? AWMS. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, look, EA. I, I told you, EA. Still, still hot. Still thirty-eight man from this afternoon. Boy, I tell you, it's just don't let it get to you, EA. Don't let it get to you. I know it's tough. It's tough. Guess what? Checking in from Monroe, Louisiana. Chuck. What's up, Chuck? Boy, Chuck. That uh, UL. Monroe, they put a beating on Grambling women. I mean, that was uncalled for. That was unexpected. Let me just say it like that. I ain't expected to be like that. Where, where it is, the refs, you know, the refs were, were paid to make sure. Kelvin, when you beat somebody word. by 30, when you beat somebody by 30, I, I don't know if the I, refs I, have anything I, I to do with it. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. I'm just saying. Yeah, Everything I was a foul. Know. That's what they said. I, <laughs> hey, I cut it on and it was like, damn. <laughs> Keith, what's up? Fangs Up Podcast. Keith checking in. What's up, Good to see you. Make sure you check out Keith. Fangs Up Podcast every Thursday night and Sunday night uh, on all of these uh, YouTube and Twitter streets. Make sure you check out Fangs Up Podcast. Good to see you. Uh, Calvin, good to appreciate you. Appreciate you as well. Checking in 
Um, let me see. Thumbs up. Uh, he's not in Tallahassee. I don't know where you're at, Kelvin, but uh, appreciate you checking in. Thanks for hitting that uh, thumbs up button. Uh, good to see you. Um, let's see. Uh, Shaka. Shaka. Chaco. Appreciate it. Rotland Mania. Appreciate you checking in. Good to see you. Kelvin Chavis checking in. Uh, <laughs> the church lead <league laughs> coach replied. Hey, I hey. saw somebody put... Somebody put my name in in the mix. I'm like, well, hey, you heard when she said a JV assistant coach. I was like, wait a minute. I know I didn't. She's talking about me. She's talking about a JV coach and put in. I'm like, come on now, Sykes. That wouldn't call for. I wouldn't call for. You had to put me out there like that. I, I thought I thought my interest was uh, incognito, you know. But man, she put I, me out. I'm, I'm I missed the advertisement. Were they advertising what they advertising that? Uh. That was a great question because that came up, um, and I want to say, you know what? Somebody who somebody who heard the actual top and she stated it, and I almost swore I heard something about like it had been posted and closed, and she was reopening it. I I, I could be wrong there, so somebody somebody yeah, correct I, me. Yeah, I hadn't heard is. about no search firm or advertisement, so. Yeah, I missed that part if she said well, it. Well, the search firm, it, well, I don't know about the search firm. I know we got a committee that's going to be headed by uh, Tommy Mitchell. I, I heard that. Okay. And Tommy a few Mitchell, other people. I think um, okay. Okay. Yeah, she said it's, it's it's not out yet. Okay. All right. Well, but I'm sure the phone is uh, blowing up. Yeah. Uh, She's she getting, she getting recommendations from John Calipari, which – I don't know, you know, dude. That's the last person I want to hear from, given the way his team performed in the NCAA tournament. I'm sorry, uh, you know, I'm like Coach Cal. You, you, you might need to clean your own house. You might need to hire somebody instead of trying to pass off somebody to to to, to an HBCU. I'm just saying, you know. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Very, very. What up, Marcus? Good to see you, Marcus. What's up, Will Marcus? Baby? All checking in. Will Davis. Good to see you, Will. Where we at on the search? Nowhere, Will. No news. <laughs> <laughs> but we will talk about it, though, today. <laughs> we will talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we're we going to get into talking about the major factors. Um, you know, two things to consider here. As we get, you know, in the second hour, we're going to get heavy into the men's basketball. But I want everybody to kind of consider what are the, what are the, you know, qualities or what do you think this coach is going to have to have? to be successful, and I have maintained that right now, FAMU basketball program is a D2 slash NAIA program wearing a Division I suit. Now, you may disagree, but we we, we, we walk like, operate like what I've seen the Division II and some NAIA programs in terms of how we move. But we are dressed in this Division I outfit. So, I don't know. Just just something to think about. Some, some, to, some to think about. Okay. Uh, you guys ready to get going with a little wrap the roundup here before we get into uh, the, uh, the bottom of the hour with our, with our first guest? Let's do it. All right, all right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh let's uh let's start it off with uh you you wanna talk you wanna talk teams or or news? Teams or news? Your call. What do you guys want to start with? I'm gonna let so, Marcus call. Start with teams. Teams. All right. Teams performing. All right, here we go. Uh well, let me see. We got uh well, we can always start with uh with the success on the field from the baseball team. Well, maybe not. It ended somewhat <laughs> over the baseball team. <laughs> I was, I was, go I was, you were, go 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 yeah, I, ball. Look, I, I was, look, I thought Mark, you threw me for a curveball there. I'm sorry. You yes. know, I, was, I, was, I was ready to go news, but Marcus threw a curve. Let's start with softball. We'll start with softball. There we go. Uh, the lady, the lady Rattlers, uh, took two out of three against, uh, Jackson State on the road um, against Jackson State, uh, taking two out of the three games. Friday night, 
uh, in game one, we actually got out hit. If you believe that, got out hit by Jackson State six to three in terms of hits. Uh, no, excuse me. We out hit Jackson State six to three. Ended up losing the game ten to one. Now that you, that's odd. That that's like uh, you, it's hard to do the math on that until you go and look at the box score you and you a see lot of that, errors. Yeah, well, uh, not well, quite errors, but more so one particular inning turned out to be our bugaboo, and that was the third inning. Uh, Rattlers were down two to one going in the bottom of the third. We gave up seven runs. And I'm in a walk. Yeah, that's what did it. That's what did it in that particular inning. I think we gave up two or three walks. Then Jackson State got one of their three hits. Then we had some more walks. Arrow. And then another hit, yeah. So it was like we committed three errors. So, I mean, in the contest overall. So it really was a bad inning that turned out to be the bugaboo for us um, where the only, you know, we did score, uh, we only scored one run. That was in the second. Um, But that third inning kind of hurt us. And so you end up losing game one 10 to one. But But score don't end there. No, not so – exactly. It does not end the there because – The is the next day. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. It is. And that's what we needed. And we got it in two games uh, against Jackson State where in uh, the first game of the doubleheader on Saturday, um, freshman Zariana Hughes, who is six and 6-2 on the year as a starter, uh, got the win – she went all seven innings, only gave up two runs. One of them was earned, allowed four hits, a walk, struck out four. Um, the Rattlers got into – now the, the great – you know, when I look at – looking at these great stats, um, the Rattlers' highest scoring inning was the sixth inning when they pushed three runs across the plate. Um, at that point, you know, the score was tied up at two, and so we scored three in the sixth. Uh, overall, we out we out hit Jackson State again, this time twelve to four, um, and, and we were seven of ten with runners in scoring position. So uh, that, that's another great job done by the Rattlers. Uh, Anaya Canty uh, was two for three with a double and an RBI in the uh, contest. And then if uh, if that wasn't enough, we shut it down. In uh, in game number two, um, Samantha Samantha Smith uh, on the mound uh, in game three, she pitched a three hit shutout. Went every inning, I think all seven innings, uh, shut down Jackson State. We won eight to nothing. So donut. donut. So that uh, improves. You know that we get another series. That's our third SWAC series and. Actually, if you look at the record now, guys, the team is 12 and 14 overall, 8 and 1, tied for first in the SWAC East. Talk a little bit about that. Remember where we started and what we were kind of like dreading, but man, I tell you, uh, all those tough games early, uh, method to the madness, right? Mm-hmm. And I think the youth, the youth movement's paying off. I mean, Zoriana Hughes is a true freshman. I believe she's out of uh, Columbia and Lake City. And Anaya Canty, I think she's one of the Georgia contingent. There's like two or three from Georgia. So all those freshmen are coming through and a good mix with uh, the upperclassmen. In addition to the transfer, Samantha Smith, you know, between hitting and pitching, she's been as advertised. Yeah, I, I think she she is, she's putting her name up there for, uh, I don't know, a um, I know they obviously have a, an outstanding hitter of the year and a pitcher of the year, but how about just, you know, if they just an overall player of the year award, I got to go look up the awards. I know it's early. We haven't hit the halfway point of the season, but uh, she, she's putting her name in the mix for one of those awards. Um, I went and looked at some of the stats for our team right now. And, and, you know, we're going into a series this weekend in Daytona beach against Bethune Cookman. Bethune's also tied it with uh with us at eight and one record. So this is a big series. The only other team that 
the record in the conference is uh, Prairie View. Prairie View right now, I think they're unbeaten eight and zero in in the SWAC, and and obviously we don't see them because East and West don't really uh, cross paths during the uh, during the regular season. So it's uh, it is real important for us in terms of seeding to keep the winning going. So this is a big series. This is probably uh, you know, to date biggest series uh, for the team on the season. Uh, we're and second. And I believe, Brian, and I yeah. believe just a note to this series, I think this is the only time we play them. Really? We don't, we don't do, uh, we don't do the two. Uh, it's, the it's, two? it's very unusual. No, usually two, but now, you know, I didn't go back and validate this, but I was, that's what someone mentioned to me. Hmm. Well, uh, that, that puts, e that makes it even bigger because if we took two out of three against Jackson State, I know we see Jackson State again because we play, we host Jackson State the weekend of the spring game. So um, that that's pretty huge that uh, this is the only time we see. So it's very important in terms of seeding, potential tiebreakers when it comes down to the SWAC tournament to get this one over Bethune uh, because that would put Bethune or – you know, whoever finishes second in the East ends up on the other side of the bracket matched up with the top dog in the West, which right now looks to be Prairie View. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the late, yeah. they're not on the schedule. Not on the schedule. So Marcus, good job. Confirmed it. Yeah, we, we're not on the schedule. Not So one. So this is it. This is it. How, how, how that happens, I have no idea. I don't know. I, I don't know why you're not playing. I mean, look, you're only playing – let me see. That's five teams, five teams. That's that's five times two. That's ten. Well, it's fifteen 10. games. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how that's not happening. I mean, anyway, I I, may, I don't understand the swag scheduling, but we'll we'll figure it out eventually. Well, it looks uh, like we played yeah. Alabama A and M twice, home and away, Valley home and away, and Jackson home and away, and we just play. Bama State and Bethune once. Cookman once. Let me go back to the make two sure closest we're schools in the East. Yeah, I, I hope make that's rotating. I, I hope I hope that's a rotating thing that they do within the uh, division. Um, well, they so still should again, do that. Your rivals and your closest games should never rotate off. Well, I guess, but it wouldn't. I think it depends on how many conference games. They're scheduling because uh, let me see. That's what you say. Three. Do the math here. Three times three. It's nine times two. That's eighteen. And then if you got eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four. So twenty-four conference games. Am I? Am I? Am I doing the math right there? Um, I know this in the math show, and it's after eight o'clock. So, uh, <laughs> but but there are only you so many right. conference. Yeah, there are only so many conference games you're going to play um, unless they let you play 30, you know, and I don't know if the SWAC does that. But Well, the point being, though, I can see you rotating home and away with Valley and um, I think it is Jackson there. State. But, but I, I don't understand why you would take the closest games no on – budget is an issue and robbery games that makes no sense right i got you i'm with you i'm with you uh so once again the ladies are in daytona beach so if you're in the daytona beach area or you can get out to go support i think the friday night i think the friday game is a 6 p.m game and then they have a uh the double header is noon and two o'clock so if you can get out and go support um, Rattler Nation, they'd love to hear you. I think, uh, you know, that's a that's a feisty bunch. I remember they 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 talk a lot of smack over in Daytona, their softball program. So that's a great rivalry. And uh, hopefully any and everybody can get over there and support the ladies. It'd be good to get a sweep. It, it'd be good to take two out of three against Bethune. If we can't get the sweep, let's take two out of three. All right. Let's uh, let's get ready to take a, our first break of the night. Come on with our first guest to the show, Coach uh, Erica Cromarty. She'll be coming up here in just a second. 
Uh, you guys hang in there. If you haven't already hit that thumbs up button or the like button, if you're watching us on YouTube and Facebook, we ask you to please do that when you can, if you can right now. So we'll be back in just a couple of minutes right here. You're watching the ONG Strike Zone right here on the Black College Sports Network. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. As we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dashboard, as well as the upcoming week of HBCU sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website www.slowburnwaco.com That's www dot slowburnwaco.com All right, welcome back to the ONG Strike Zone. Ryan, Kelvin, Marcus, and then we got joining us special guest, friend of the program, Coach Erica Cromarty. Coach, how you doing? Hey, how, you doing? how you all? How you guys doing tonight? We doing well. well. I'm good. good. To have you on. good. How, how's, how's everything going? It's going okay. You know, it, it's tough, but we getting through it. <laughs> I definitely understand. Definitely understand. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, um, let's 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 kind of first let's catch people up with uh, with the past season uh, before we get into more of the current news and things like that. But uh, how was the past season for the uh, Baby Rattlers? Uh, the past season was a tough season for the Baby Rattlers. Um, I had a, a real young team, and um, you know how that goes. You take your growing pains and you take your whips. So. I think I think they learned a lot from it. It just doesn't feel good at times, but we did see some gains. So I mean, you got to take it how it goes. Sometimes I don't like it. <laughs> I'm not no. used to it, but you know, <laughs> it doesn't feel no. good. No, no. I, I and and when you have the kind when you have a when you have a tough season, what kind of things do you go through in the evaluation process and in, in the postseason? I mean, this is that time where. You probably have given yourself a couple of weeks to, you know, decompress, and and pretty soon you, if you haven't already, you're already starting to think about the, the 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 summer, and even doing scheduling for next year. But but what kind of things have you kind of looked at in terms of the evaluation of the past season? Things you you might do differently or or tweak or improve going forward. Well, really, it's just you know. As, as I said before, our school is very small. So a lot of our kids play multiple sports. So the girls I had now, they're playing softball and um and flag football. So I'm trying to get them to kind of like not stop the other sports, but kind of limit it because you only become a basketball player when it's basketball season, and that's not going to work, you know? 
So we, I have a couple girls that straight basketball. So this summer they're going to get in the gym and just kind of work. But that's just the only down. I won't even say it's a downfall because at a small school you have that. I would say that's our only limitation that we have is that our kids play multiple sports. So um, I just told them that we got we got to carve out some time for just basketball if you're going to play it because you can't you can't have it. You know what I mean? You know what I told them, but you you can't have do it. And um and and see, I go all in. You know that's just kind of how I was raised. Is how I coach. And so I just feel like you kind of shorten my program when I only get half of you. So mm-hmm. that's just what we got to do. We got to get in the gym and work. And I mean, and not just when the basketball season starts. Yep, I I understand, I understand 100. Kelvin, go ahead. Coach, I'm wondering how many seniors you had on this team and how many girls you got returning? I only had one senior, so that was a good thing. I had one that attended another school and played for us because her school didn't have a um, program. But other than that, I only had one in-house senior. So, I mean, that's a good thing to look at it, that I got a lot returning. Um, I mean, and, and, and for the most part, I, I didn't have any discipline problems or anything like that. I, and I thank God for that. I've kind of never really had that. It's just the skill of itself, you know what I mean, of the game. But, I mean, I realize that I can't always be on one side of it. You know, you got to go through both sides. So, you know, it's just got to continue to work. Okay. All right. Now, Coach, uh, I, I want to go ahead and uh, get on a di- different note, uh, a different family you had note. Uh, we had the passing of uh, one, of, one of the people who watched our shows and appeared on a couple of other uh, podcasts and, you know, we, we used to hear staple around Tallahassee and FAMU and FAMU yeah. High specific, your your program specifically. Oh, so yeah. uh, just talk about talk about Chaka Perkins and, you know, what you know what that loss means to you. Man, I met Chaka. So he's actually um, in the class with my oldest sister. They're a class of 91. So and I, I arrived at FAMU High in 89. So I met Chaka a long time ago. And um, I just could remember before I even started playing basketball, he used to be around the boys basketball program. Well, any sport, but mostly I remember him being with Coach Lane with the boys basketball team. And he just, you know, supported, never played, but never coached. He just was always around it. So then when I started playing in like the fifth grade, he started coming around us. And you just kind of, you just kind of respect the Chaka. You just knew that, okay, he's going to be there. He has your best interest. He's going to support you. Listen to what he has to say. And I remember when I first started playing, he was like, man, you're going to be pretty good, you know, but you just got to keep playing. And he just always stayed around. And then um, when I when I got in high school, he was there. I think he might have moved to D.C. my senior year, but uh, he moved back. And when I started coaching at FAMU High School, he was the first one to reach out and say, look, I don't have to be on your staff. I don't have to do anything i just want to support and i'm gonna find my way in what i want to do and that's when he started doing the shirts so all the shirts that you see we have the state championship shirts the the season shirts all that's chocolate perkins so to replace that and not just the shirts i mean the shirt he wouldn't even charge us he would get the girl sizes and then he would give the girl shirts i mean i think our second state championship our shooter shirts chocolate bought all that stuff um, he would give me money to feed the girls. Like he just was a, a, a really, really, really good person. And, I, and he's my brother. We would travel together, different games, go scout teams together. That 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 one right there kind of hurt me right there. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agreed. All right. And so to go from there, Coach, I see you all the time at uh, at the um, games and so forth. I saw you brought your team. A couple yes. of times, oh, definitely, yes. Right, right. So, talk about what what you saw as as a fan and as a coach uh, this year from the um, family women's basketball program. Oh man, I I, I spoke with um, Coach Gordon. And I told her, man, I'm in. Well, I already, I kind of already knew what she was gonna do because I already knew her, so I already knew what she was gonna bring to the program. I didn't expect it so fast, but hey, I mean. I think she's an excellent coach. I think she – I know she knows the game. I know she has the, the experience. But I thought it was going to take a little bit more time. But, man, she did it. She did it the first year. Um, I'm so excited to see what else is going to come with that because you can kind of just see it from this year 
once she get her players and once they start buying into her um her, her style and her way like i would come to her practices um and just sit there and watch and just take notes and i mean i i think she's i i knew when i seen that she had the job i said they got it right this time because i knew that what she was going to bring to the program i think she's a phenomenal person a phenomenal coach yes absolutely all right marcus uh, Coach, thanks for joining us this evening. I guess I have a double question. Um, one, I'm kind of removed a little bit from it, but I've seen a lot of churn and changes in the uh, I got the FHSAA, and I don't know if any of the changes, either from a legislative standpoint or districts, has an impact on you or, or FAMI DRS. Um, yes, um, more so the the transfer. I mean, I know we talk about it in college, but it's in high school too um i mean and i hate and i don't want to make it seem as if that's why we kind of struggle because these th those things happen but um a couple maybe like before last we lost two of our starters you know to a, a school in Tallahassee, and it kind of it kind of helped us kind of decline in the wrong way because we already have a small bunch to pull from anyway so when you lose those two starters it kind of like was a domino effect and were they tampered with? I don't know. I don't even get into that or whatever. I just feel I just try to coach who I have there. So yeah, the the, the transfer thing is just kind of like tough because as soon as a player or a parent feel like something is better, you you don't have them. And I don't care what kind of coach you are, if you don't have the players, it, it won't work. So things like that, and to me, I just feel like they're a little bit more lax with the players now. You know, it's it's getting closer to like the college style, and I don't really like that. Okay. And actually, my second question is kind of similar to that, but I guess you may have answered it a little bit in that we've seen at the collegiate level and a lot of with the social stuff going on since 2020, you know, a kind of a harken back to HBCUs and a lot of, uh, it, I don't know, clamoring back, if you will. And I don't know if that's trickled down to family DRS where there may be some players who are like, you know what? I want to go to a school and have a coach that looks like me. Have you seen anything like that that's trickled down at the family DRS? No, I mean, it's just kind of, it's kind of hard for us to, and I will say this, it, it, it's kind of hard for us to kind of get the cream of the crop as we had in the past, because so many other schools are just kind of so competitive now, you know, we're small one you know and then we don't offer a lot of things that these other schools can offer so it's, it's kind of hard to retain um th those kids you know what i mean now don't get me wrong the kids we have there are excellent students you know but to kind of compete with the bigger schools is just tough because they offer so many other things that we just can't with our size and our enrollment so it, it's kind of tough it, it is kind of tough but at the end of the day, I try to play and work with what I have, you know what I mean? Because I just feel like it's a reason I have what I have. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Coach, Marcus kind of talked about transferring, and I'm, I'm curious about, obviously, you have a lot of connections, and I'm sure you talk with a lot of young people, uh, young ladies, whether they be your former players or maybe players that are, that are you know, in, in school. But um, I'm seeing a, within just the slack. Um, there's a lot of transfer, or at least jumping into the portal. I won't call it quite transferring yet because they haven't officially gone anywhere. They just putting their name out there. But just if you can, what are you, what are you hearing uh, as maybe some of the reasons why you see so many players jumping into the portal and and that feel free that could even jump into the guys as well <laughs> but we're seeing a lot with the with the with the girls game and maybe maybe it's just because it hasn't been reported uh in the past couple of years but it, or maybe it's, this is really is a high volume number of kids what what's your what's your take on what you're seeing from uh, from the number of kids jumping into the portal well, I can't speak for all of it because I don't know all the situations, but I know some of it has been these kids are a little different. You know, this generation wanna they want instant gratification, they want microwave success. And you know, sometimes it doesn't work like that. Sometimes you gotta work your way into the starting five, work your way into that lineup. But they feel like the grass is greener over here, or this is a different situation. I can just run in and start. And you might could go somewhere else and and just instantly start. That doesn't mean it's gonna be good for you. 
you might need those growing seasons where you sit back and watch somebody else play. And some of the, the some of the reasons for the transfers are legitimate. Don't get me wrong. Some of them, you know, they've been in tough situations and they're trying to find a different way. Then you have some that kind of realize, you know what? This school did recruit me before I went to this other school. I probably would do better here, so let me go here. So some of the reasons are legitimate, but then you have some that just feel like I didn't get my way over here, so let me try to get it over here. And to me, you won't never be successful that way. Hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 interesting. See, I did, and I always wonder because I with with the men's game, you hear about nil always kind of yeah. being that catalyst for why kids might be jumping but i don't i don't really know what it is for the the the, the women's players because i i guess we don't see publicly as many i'm maybe it's out there and we just aren't seeing it or hearing about it see, i've been seeing some recently and some of them has been maybe coach coach changes and then you have some that just don't like the style of a coach just it, it, it it's various reasons for females i will say that and i thank god we didn't have it because I remember when I was at Miles, uh, they were like, you, you're there for four years, stick it out, work it out. And that's just kind of <laughs> how it was. <laughs> it wasn't, no, I'm leaving, going back home. No, you're there for four years, you can make it work. And I'm happy I did. But there's so many options they have now, till it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Go ahead, Kelvin. Coach, let me just say, first of all, I love it. because uh, And Coach Gordon is the same way. But you old school, Coach. <laughs> yes, 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 sir, yes, sir. And, that's, I think, and I think that's why I, I like Coach Gordon's style so much. Is yeah. because I told her, I was like, Coach, I like the fact that you get on them, right? But you tell them why. But she, I love it because she, she, you know, she gonna tell you what's going on, and I love that because sometimes they don't understand what's really going on, and I think they know that she does care for them still at the same time. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the women's, I would tell you, I pay more attention to women's basketball yes. in college than I do the men's game. I love yes. the women's game. Yes. Um, they yes. got the, they're the, they're the ones with all the real superstars uh, this season, particularly, but over the last couple of seasons um, now, you know, because they use that platform, their voice to right. you know, expose some of, the, some of the inequity in terms of uh, resources. And yes. access in their in their tournament, I love everything about it. I love the coaching. I I I love that the players, you know, coming at each other. You know, yes. they, you know, it's, it's great. I, I mean, uh, yeah, but, talk talk about it. No, that, no, I, that's I, my was, question. I, I did my bracket. We did our brackets at work, and I told them I was like, okay, I'll do the men's, but I really wasn't following it like that. I'm still leading them both brackets, but my women's bracket, they said I might have missed. Like I'm leading everybody because I'm I'm barely missing teams because I love the game so much. I know what I know what these teams are gonna do. Now you have some that's gonna surprise you, like dang, I didn't think they was gonna do that. But for the most part, you kind of you got if you've been watching it, and you know the game, you you know what these teams are gonna do. So, so my women's bracket is great. Like I should have put it in the ESPN thing and got some money from that. But that's because it's so exciting. You know what I mean? Like I love the women's game and I pray one day I can get on that level. But it's like you said, it's just, I mean, I rush to get home to watch some of those games. The men's games are not bad, but it's like, it's missing something, you know, like yeah. it's just not as yeah. exciting as the women's game. Agreed. Definitely. Oh. Hold on, Cole. Let me let me get. I got my pen out. Go. Who was your four? Let me go ahead and write this down now. <laughs> no, I can't. I gotta charge you. But I'm giving it to you. I gotta. I gotta charge. You. Hey, now, hey, coach. Any, anything, know? anything. I win, coach. I'm sending. I'm sending fifty percent hey. to you. So I mean, look. Let, let's well, go you know in here. My, Who's your, hey, my, South Carolina. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, South Carolina off the rip. They they're gonna win it. I pray anyway, because, you know, last year they lost at the wrong time. And I told my coworker, I was like, if you're going to lose, lose early, not in the playoffs. But I think this year they got it. I pray they do. I put them as my national championship team. For the men, I put I put UNC. See, let me tell you how I don't really watch it. I put UNC. I only seen them play one time, so I don't know about that's that. That's not a bad – it's not a bad – It's not. that's not a bad choice on the men's side. Yeah, um, I what, what's the other? What's the other in the final four? Because you know I'm 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 all well, for. When, I, look, I had UNC, I had a uh, USC. Um, who else did I have? I gotta pull that's, it up. That's USC, that's USC women, right? Yeah. Did you? Uh -huh. Who who went in the Iowa bracket? <laughs> who were they playing against? Was LSU? I think in that 
Isn't that LSU either? Yeah. Uh, potentially. I put yeah. LSU over Iowa. I did. Because one Ooh. thing about, to me, one thing about LSU, they turn it on when it's when it's postseason, like a light bulb go off with them. Like, they become dogs when it's the postseason. And I, and I think they're going to make some noise. I do. And I forgot who the other, who the other ones I had. Yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah. I, I'll Texas. figure it out. Mark, the, who? The Texas uh, region. Who was with them? The I have Texas over. It was a Stanford. Somebody. I had Texas going to the final yeah. four. I did. Okay. Texas. Okay. Yeah. All right. and the reason why I said that, they lost their best player, the um, point guard, and they still got number one seed. And they're still – they he put a forward as a guard to play point guard. That's hard to do. That is yeah. really hard to do. And the fact that they're still balling, I was like, they, they might do something. I love this time of the year if y'all can't. Uh, see yeah, Texas. Texas is the one seed. They're in the bracket with. Uh, they play Gonzaga, and then they, and then they're on the other side. You got NC State and Stanford on the other side. You know what? I put I pick NC State over Stanford. Ooh, okay. I did. Coach, I coach, did. Well, you, you, you took my bracket because I pick NC notes. State for Tennessee. I picked them. I pick NC State for that because it's something about NC State when they get. I'm like, okay, okay. Mm. Strong stuff. Strong stuff. Uh, Marcus, go- but I ain't too sold on Stanford all the way. Yeah. Yeah. I've I seen them have a few struggles against uh, who was it? Utah. Was it? No, was it you? You Iowa State. Iowa State. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They, they barely got through on them. That's pretty good, too. But I don't see them going too, 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 too far. Yeah. Marcus, what do you got? You got anything for Coach? Uh, coach, what do you think? Uh, even though it's eight, nine months off, what do you think would be your biggest challenge for next season? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's kind of tough with that because I always start off with a goal and then mid-season I've, I've changed it to something else because God always showed me something totally different. And I used to question it like, okay, Lord, you, you let me see so much on the high side. And now it's like you're saying, okay, now you got to see both sides, which I, I truly will accept. But the main thing I want the girls to get from it is to understand what hard work can get you. I'm not even saying, oh, we got to win a state championship because not trying to say I'm um, all that, but I've done that. You know what I mean? So now I, w- I would love to have more. Don't get me wrong. But if I don't, it's not like we, we just, you know what I'm saying? We are, we're terrible. No, it's not make or break. I want them to learn how to work hard and see what work, hard work can do. Even if, if that's a district championship, you get a scholarship. Or you'll just be better off in life. I think some of some of the times this generation is lacking hard work. They want to do it for a little bit, and then they want to see results. It might not happen right then. So just I think just to, for them to work hard the entire season, and then maybe see the fruits of their labor at the end. Because we did make gains this year. I mean, there's things that I saw. I seen in them as a coach from the outside. You might not see it, but I did see gains. But I want them to continue to work hard from when we preseason in, in October. All the way to February, and then see what you get from that. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, are, are you before, quick question? Are you going to continue to schedule the same? Are you going to adjust a little bit? I am. I'm not changing anything. I'm not that coach. I had <laughs> and I, I, I coached with them. I when we were like killing everybody, I couldn't get anybody. I couldn't get anybody. Now we're kind of down. My phone blows off. <laughs> and I play, I, I play them the same way because one thing about me, I'm gonna be the same person when I'm up here and when I'm down. And I teach my girls that right. you don't run yeah. from nobody. Yes. Yeah, it's, awesome. it's funny. It's funny how that works. You know, they say they they want to go. You we 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 can catch fam. You DRS. They down right now. Hey, coach, you want to get a game? <laughs> but yeah, one, like you said, one, he said I will play you when Jasmine Jones leave. I'm like, well, they don't play me. If you gotta wait till she leave. <laughs> Don't 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 play me then. Don't do that. Um, I also want I wanted to give you one last opportunity to uh, shout out your uh, your your alma mater, uh, Miles the yes, Golden sir. Bears. They they hey they they in that SIAC championship game that was an amazing game. They've had a great run this year, but I mean, uh, I think you were at the you were at that game, weren't you? Did I see some photos? You were there. <laughs> The first round in a first round game, they went to that Osta State, and you guys, it was just I mean, yeah, I'm a family you high alum, so I guess working, there, I'm like, okay, but for some reason, coming to that game, 
and seeing those girls, I'm like, dang, I wore that same number. I did, you know, it was just something to sit right behind the bench and just see them. And they are really good. I mean, they better than we were. Like they were, they were really, really good. But also just, but also state just had too much. They were too deep. Um, they could spread the ball around. They can go inside. They can go outside. And they're in the home. They did have a home court advantage. So their crowd was into it. Um, Miles fault, but you could just tell the experience wasn't there in that time of the season. But I still had been there before. But they played good. You know, they I, I was so happy that I was able to come. I met the president, the AD, you know, some of the, some of my team my teammate was there. Like it was just a good experience. I, the program was headed in the right direction for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh I, I keep telling people in terms of basketball schools, Miles is up there with uh other programs in terms of being a basketball school. They have a very good men and women's uh, basketball program at Miles, sure. Miles College. So uh, just got to get right. a new <laughs> Yes. Yeah. That that's on the, yeah, that, that has, yeah. yeah. But that, that, that gym boy, I tell you, when he gets Ooh. going, boy, ooh, it's nothing like it. It's hard yeah. going in there getting a win. I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. yeah that's the truth though. That is, that's definitely true. Uh, coach, uh, give you a chance to give any any shout outs or updates uh, to any anything you're doing, any fundraisers or anything that uh, Rattler Nation can do to support the program. I want to give you a chance to kind of maybe pub anything that you got or might be working on. Well, I mean, I just want to say continue to support us. Uh, we're small, but we're big in heart. Um, our school has a great tradition. Um, Mr. Roja can vouch for that. And, you know, when you give to university, think about the babies down the street because we definitely could use the support and the funds. Um, and just, you know, give another shout out to Chaka Perkins. Um, I have to, I've been asked to speak at his service on Saturday. Lord, give me strength for that. Amen. So just trying yeah. to, you know, gather those things together and stuff and just keep us in prayer. You know, we're just trying to do what we can with what we have. So, and it's all for the children. What uh what's the what's the avenue that people can go to when they do want to support? Is there a, a portal uh, link? Foundation. Um and they can go under the tab is Family DRS Girls Basketball. Or if they're local, um, they can send it to the school. I personally don't take any funds directly. Um they That's can just send it to the school and then they'll divvy it out to us. But the if, if they're they can do the foundation, that's the quickest way I will see it within the program. So Family Foundation, it's a tab that says Family okay. DRS Girl. And, okay. and Brian, I had your shirt. Chaka was actually in the process of giving me your your shirt, and oh. you know things happen. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Well, I, I will wear it with, with pride uh, when when I when I see you or when I get it. Um, but yeah, I know I, I didn't know he had it still. He was going to yeah. give it. To so I don't. Oh, I got you. I got you. I guess. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Well, we we have to we have to find a way to get uh, we have to keep that tradition going. We have to find a way to keep that tradition That's going because I gotta see who I can trust with that because he he did a really good job with that. So I don't know. I've been thinking about it as well, but I want to you know get into all of that. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I, I I got you. Um, I not so so again, folks. FAMU Foundation. That's good to know. That's a great. I mean, we're we're so used to we pub that. Family Foundation site every week practically. So, uh, yeah, you guys can. Uh, what, what's that code again? What's that code again? Do you, you know? Download what? a number, but they'll see a tab, and it says Family. D you can go through them, and they'll yeah. see our tab. DRS Girls Basketball, and I and that's the quickest way that we'll see it. If you go to the school, they got to go through different right. channels for the foundation. It'll go right in our account. All right, uh, we'll see if we can find that. If Kelvin or Marcus, see if we can find that in the break, and maybe we can drop that in the. Uh, in the uh in the in the chat and uh you guys out there watching uh can make if you want to make a small donation to uh the uh the uh girls basketball program over at family drs every every dollar helps every dollar helps okay. definitely lastly uh, what cause picks for the national championship for women is it south carolina as well everybody no i'm 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 going yes. i'm going i'm, I'm going south away. carolina I'm, I'm going away from South Carolina. I'm going away from really? South Carolina. I'm uh, I I don't know if uh, you know uh, earlier in the season somebody told me to keep an eye on Colorado. Um, so if I got a real real dark horse, and now they got a tough game. They got to take out Iowa first game, right? Yeah. But I'm just saying, watch out if they take out Iowa. Woo. Okay, that's different. That's different. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> Anything it, 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 
you know, anything can happen. So I won't say no, yes or no. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I, I mean, basically what, basically what she said, you done lost your money. No. <laughs> I mean, well, look, you know, I, I got I coaches. Look. Okay, I got man. coaches pick, so look, that, that's my side bracket. You know, my my personal thoughts will be over on the side, but I'm gonna roll with coaches picks. Don't you don't get that twisted right there. I got her four, so yeah. What? I think South Carolina. I think if they don't have any like uh ohs, they should be okay. I think. I pray. <laughs> <way. laughs> yeah. All right. See, people people already chiming, in, already hating on my Colorado. That's all right. You guys will all apologize. I want your tweet. <laughs> When Colorado knocks off the great Caitlin Clark, y'all just say, Dog, that one's another one. You got another one. Yeah, that could happen. All right. Just saying. But I don't know about winning the whole thing, but you never know. Well, yeah, yeah. Long road. We, one game at a time. We, you know, one yeah. lucky shot in the dark. You know, that's all it takes. Uh, I, I, I watch a show when I'm just going through Twitter. I, I tune in a lot. So I, I, I keep informing what you all are doing, and you're doing a great job. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate you. Hey, uh, you be well. Uh, we'll keep uh, you and uh, uh, the Perkins family and our prayers going into this weekend. Uh, all of the, uh, you know, the FAMU and Tallahassee community, um, definitely keep you all in our thoughts and prayers this weekend. I know it'll be tough. So um, God bless you. Thank you for uh, taking some time out tonight. And uh, much success. We'll talk soon. I know if we don't, if I don't see you soon, we'll talk soon. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Thanks, Coach. All right. Again, uh, Coach Erica Cromarty, uh, FAMU DRS, a.k.a. FAMU High, uh, girls basketball uh -huh. coach, FAMU Foundation. Well, uh, that's great. You can go to the FAMU Foundation and make a donation to the to the uh, basketball program. Man, that is, that is awesome. We got to – we we'll have to make sure to uh, put that. We'll we'll put that link out, or at least find that code number. Um, uh, no, no, EA. I'm I'm not. Salome's not even playing. I thought she was pregnant or something. She's not even playing. I don't. Anyway, I ain't. I ain't whatever. All right, we'll see. We'll see. I'll explain. But anyway, coming up on the other side of the break, let's talk about the men's basketball program. All right, let's, there's a lot to talk about. A lot to unpack. So we got some good info. Uh, we'll talk about that on the other side uh, and more. You're watching the ONG Strike Zone right here on the Black College Sports Network. We'll be back in just a moment. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and parenting education coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational. Powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K E A V E R S V O I C E dot com. Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice dot com. Always on, all the time. Nope. Nope. Come on, him. Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com.
All right, welcome back to the ONG Strike Zone. Brian, Kelvin, Marcus joining you this evening. Um, I'm going to make sure to go ahead and put the uh, <laughs> go ahead and put the um, the link to the FAMU Foundation page, so that way, if you want to donate to uh, the FAMU DRS Girls Basketball Program, you can do that um yeah you know what i russell hayes jumped in yeah interesting you got two usc's mm -hmm. in the two number one seeds at that you got the university of south carolina and the university of southern cal um I, I i tweeted this out the other day i came across a great little video of cheryl miller who's she's one of my favorite like all-time favorite women basketball players right and she was in an interview sitting next to juju watkins and if you don't know who that is uh super freshman at usc broke uh caitlin clark's all-time scoring record as a freshman um i think she had like almost a dozen 30-point games this year which i think was another record she set but anyway, <clears throat> just kind of hearing old school, new school, and just hearing that conversation between those two, uh, it was pretty cool. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I may have to root for – USC was one of those programs that I dreamed of maybe attending from, you know, my uh, living in Indiana. You're like, hey, if I go anywhere out west, I'll go to USC. You know, everybody has those dream colleges. But uh, – yeah, you know, it, it was pretty cool. So, I don't know. I may have to keep my eye on USC in the next couple of years. But, uh, yeah. So, hey, before we get into talking about uh, basketball, let's, uh, let's, Kelvin, let's go through some of the news surrounding our football program. Well, the first thing we'll talk about is for those who want to sponsor a ring, uh, the AD mentioned today, and they have it back on a site where you can sponsor one of the ring championship rings. I think it's only going to be open until the end of the end of business, either Thursday or Friday. But you know, we we say we champions. We want to make sure that we help. Uh, uh, make sure that we 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 help out. So. You can still sponsor. Go to the athletic website. You still can sponsor uh, the championship rings for a student athlete. Um, there are – when I went to that site, there are a lot of uh, – a lot of names still unclaimed. And I'm assuming what you can do – here, I'm going to pull up the website here and share it so that way those of you who are watching, uh, you can kind of see – what I'm referencing, uh, if it pulls up here. Uh, we'll see how this works out. All right. Come on. Da -da 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 Nothing like the good drama of slow moving television. There we go. All right. Uh, so I believe fam you uh, athletics.com slash ring or rings. I think it is, is where you can get to it. And, uh, you can, you can choose to sponsor. Like Kelvin said, you can choose to sponsor. Um, it's got a process is $200 sponsor your name, your business name. But what I caught my attention, Kelvin is this right here. Football player options. Now, the whole idea is to put or sponsor a ring box for a particular player. There's a lot of names still listed here. Some well-known, some maybe not so well-known. Uh, <coughs> so, you know, if, if you were so inclined to want to donate 200 bucks to the box for Isaiah Major, you can do that. His name is still there. 
Danny Blades, right there. You know, uh, a lot of names that you see. Jamari Jackson, Damon Goff. Uh, so it's a great opportunity. Uh, you know, to, to really. If that's current, Brian. That's a good point. That's a good point. I don't know if it's you current know, or not. I yeah, I, there's no there's no hyperlinks, so I don't know if anybody's looking and is automatically taking names off the list or not. Right. Let's hope so. And uh, let, let's say that uh, allegedly the Reno. I mean, it, it said she she said today they are paid for. I, I know we are skeptical about things that are said these days. Uh, but no, um, <laughs> we're told that they are paid for, allegedly. That's funny. Um, which, <laughs> so. which, which, which ones, though? Both well, sets or just? I'm, I'm on. She's okay. So she has said that both sets, because in total, the rings came out to about four fifty per player. They're getting two rings. Uh, apparently, the the details of the celebration bowl ring were a little more challenging in terms of the timeline for the for the uh, producer, the d- designers of the ring. So those will probably be done or given out in the fall, I imagine. Uh, sometime I'm sure they'll do it around a home game weekend. Uh, but you know, the SWAC championship ones are the ones that will be given out this weekend. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the next football news is we have the spring game weekend and, um, on the athletic site that I don't know if you had a slide or not, Brian, but we, we, we have a, a series of activities for that weekend. I, I think the biggest thing of note, first of all, is that there is a charge. The game is not free. $15 and tickets are on sale now. If you're a season ticket holder and have the ticket master account, you can go ahead and purchase them online right now. If you're a local, you can go to the ticket office and purchase your tickets right now. $15 will be the cost for the spring game. And it starts at 4 p.m. April 13th, Bragg Memorial Stadium. My honest, there's no reserve parking. There will be only one side of the stadium open. I believe she changed. I think she said the west side, which would be the press ball side if that's the case. Um, and keep the and sun out of people's face. And they have, and they are looking into tailgating, but it's first come, first served anyway. So I don't know how much that matters. But somebody asked about tailgating spots, so some information may come about that. Now that same morning, there's coffee with cozy. So the head ball coach will do some kind of brunch or breakfast at 930 at the rec center. And I'm sure that's a fundraiser, too. I don't have the information in terms of the cost for that right now, but it'd be at the rec center at 930. Coffee with Cozy. <laughs> that's cute. We also have Friday night, the uh, SWAT championship ring reception. That, too. Is uh we have a cost to it. It's not free. It's Friday night at the Grand Ballroom, April twelfth at seven p.m. And I imagine, oh, they have tickets available. Yeah, online. Yes, tickets. Yeah, yeah. For, for, for for all three events. So uh, the, the uh, ring reception looks more like a uh, kind of a a black. Given the pricing, a uh, hundred dollars to attend, seven fifty. Or a table that's more of a probably a, a black tie, even though it doesn't say black tie, but it's probably your more formal event uh, where they're really looking for sponsors, looking for corporate and groups to really get behind um, paying for um, paying for this thing. Well, it's pretty much similar to the kickoff luncheon that they do in the fall. That's right. those those are the prices for that. So mm-hmm. 
seems seems like a similar endeavor to offset some of the costs for the, for the for that makes sense. Those yeah. tickets, like you say, the tickets for the SWAT Championship Ring reception Friday night, one hundred dollars for a seat, seven hundred fifty for a table. Does include food. And in terms of the coffee with cozy at nine thirty Saturday morning, continental continental breakfast is included, and tickets for the event are thirty five dollars a piece, and they are available through Ticketmaster online, or you can come in locally to the family ticket office. Now, there's a question in the chat, and I think I saw something on Twitter about the inventory sale. So I guess the question is, what exactly is that? The only thing that I know of is that there will be jerseys for sale. Are they game-worn jerseys from older inventory? I imagine it's some of those. I, but, you know, I, I will get more information, and I, I'll make sure that I share that at the show next Wednesday. Okay. So this is a great fundraising opportunity um, for the department, for the program. Um, obviously, uh, there, there's different uh, – what, what, I, what I find and what I do like is that you got different scales of contributing. You know, maybe you want to jump in. You know, like most people will probably do one or two events. Right. I mean, so the question is, if you're able, you might do the the reception because that's a donation that you're going to be making. Um, and then you'll probably go to the spring game, you know, or you might be someone that does the coffee with Colsey and then go to the spring game, you know, so you, you're and I'm I'm. You know, hell, that I mean I'm I'm all for this. I I think this is good. Agree, agree. This is good. and this, it, this is and good. if you're not going to be in Tallahassee, you're not going to be able to make it. You still can go along. Oh, you can still go online and contribute. And and folks, that that's where we have to get to. We we have to get there. You you, I mean, we can we can we can take issue with the idea. I know some of you are seen in the chat. You got you you you're upset, disgruntled with how uh, you know I, I I'm I'm reading a couple of comments here. You know uh, uh, Kenya here <clears throat> mad at how this was done. You know where you could have done a direct campaign to members of investing in champions and could have gotten all of these sponsored. Yeah, yes, uh, you're one hundred percent correct, Kenya. Um, that is one way that this could have been done. <laughs> I can't disagree with you. Uh, don't but put, don't put, hey, do not put EA coming up. <laughs> <laughs> EA, you probably ain't wrong, but we can't put that up. Wait a minute. I, 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 I'm not going to put it. I've been looking for it, though. Hold on. Uh, nine, nine, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. See, you come on, EA. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I mean, so, so again, I mean, we gotta, we gotta get into the point of contributing to this, um, you know, uh, the, the, the $15 for the spring game. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a great price. Uh, we, we have to, again, yeah. we're talking about being, if y'all want to, if y'all want to move past being a division to operating at a division two level. Let me say that. I, that's the way it probably should be said. We've got to do more as supporters. Uh, the product is worth paying for. The coaching is worth supporting. Student okay? athletes. The student yeah. athletes. Yes. They, they, and you know, uh, eventually we'll do some other things, but we, we've got to, we got to do our part. And, uh, you know, uh, and, and that's why when you do your part, heck, yeah, you can raise fuss when you see stuff that you don't yeah. like and is done poorly. 
So that that's the, that's the trade off with that. It, it's yeah. not a it's not a give without any give and be quiet. No, heck no. It's give support, and when you see stuff that ain't right, it's incumbent upon you to call it out and let people know that's wrong the way you're doing it. That's not how it should be done. Period. Agreed. Uh, agreed, and, and I and I, and I do agree that you know the uh, I love the fact that they have the pricing already. You can make the purchase already. It's clearly communicated at this point. So, um, thank you for that. Now, uh, what uh, what else is going on? Well, we had our recruiting. We had our running back coach get another title added to his responsibility. Mm-hmm. He's also the recruiting coordinator. And uh, I, if, if anybody been paying attention, our former player from last year is a assistant um, coordinator. Jordan, uh, Moore. Jordan Moore. Yeah, out of Texas. And like that's what he's focusing on. So the the rec- so that position is 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 filled. We still don't have a. We know coach has made recommendations and is going through a process through the university with the D line coach and the quarterback coach. And I'm not. Sure, I, I'm assuming the director of operations. And I'm fairly sure that budget probably is gonna hold some of those up along with some other things. I know there's another one out there that w- w- won't happen until the summer, but that has something to do with the candidate potentially. So, so um, I you know, coach was hopeful that he could get you know his staff in place prior to the spring, but you know, unfortunately. Some of that has not happened, and hopefully we'll go ahead and speed that process up. Mm-hmm. All right. And, and lastly, with football, is uh, we've been practicing the scrimmage on Friday. And this will be, I believe, the second second scrimmage. Yeah, but I consider it the first and full pass where folks know where they're going and doing. I never pay attention to the first scrimmage. Uh, so, yeah, because I was going to say, so, when was the first scrimmage? Was it before spring break? That's a good question. It had to be, but I ain't think it was in full pass then. They might have just been in shells, uppers. Huh. Yeah. Quick up. Quick add to the football before we move on. We did have a couple offers. I think the last one we talked about, ooh, it's almost three weeks ago, the running back uh, from Reedley Junior College, uh, Conte Kaysen, but came across something on um, Instagram, Aaron Webb, who is a transfer in the portal from Mississippi Valley, originally from uh, Pattonville High School in St. Louis, Missouri. Apparently, we made his final five. This is oh, about 10 days ago, so I haven't checked back. Between Alabama State, Delta State, Division II, us, Alabama A&M, and North Carolina Central. He's a 6'1", 180 defensive back. I didn't check to see if he made any all swag teams or the accolades yet. Uh, we got a commitment from a transfer wide receiver who's coming back to the state of Florida. Played his ball at Columbia Lake City. And went up, started at University of Cincinnati, his class of 2020. Uh, Marquez Bell goes 6'1, all, 175. All time leading receiver at uh, Lake, Lake City, Columbia High School. Mm. So he started out at University of Cincinnati, then he transferred to Old Dominion, and he was class of 2020. And it seemed like he didn't get a lot of, a lot of uh, playing time at either university so he should be fresh as long as he comes through in his commitment so we're building up the wide receiver roster we did offer he's a may graduate of old dominion and he jumped in the portal in the first week in january and we did offer a an offensive lineman from texas uh anthony crease goes 66305 class of 2022 started out the university of texas Pearman basin 
which is Odessa, Texas, I believe they're Division II. Then moved to Navarro Junior College this past year, and we offered him. It looks like he's got a few other offers in the last few days. But an offensive lineman out of Texas. We didn't have a visit, no commitment yet by a local local player, uh, Dorian Collier. I think he's a running back or athlete. Played at Lincoln a couple years ago. And just got an, I saw an offer that was made, what's today, the 27th? Uh, to 25th, which would have been Monday. Uh, the Breland Charles, uh, a defensive end linebacker who goes 6'4", 260, uh, transferring from Navarro College once again, but he played his freshman year, class of 2021, at Lamar University. So that's like the second or third Lamar University uh, or someone with Lamar University ties that we've offered in this recruiting cycle. And that's just for class of 2024. Mm -hmm. We've offered a couple in other classes, but just looking at class of 2024 for the this upcoming year. Now, those are the ones that have been recent. There's a couple others in the class of, I think, 26 and 25. Talk, talk about the Porter guys real quick. Any updates on uh, any of the football Porter guys? Uh, I haven't been keeping track. I saw General has gotten a few, gotten some traction in the last couple of days. Yeah, yeah, I know he's, he's got some traction. Taking, yeah, he's taking like three visits to different, mm -hmm. different schools. But uh, in terms of chain and no, Chain has not signed with anybody yet. Uh, kind of a what, tweet he yeah, it was a tweet out. yesterday. Right? Yeah, there was a tweet, but apparently it got yanked. So I don't know what's <laughs> up with that. Oh, man. I don't oh. know if he, I don't know if it got yanked. If he retweeted it, um, you know, because sometimes athletes or, or people will tweet something and then do a different version, and then the old one's gone. So I haven't checked back, but it it showed him. Uh, I think it was just an image of him in his FAMU uniform. I don't, know, I don't yeah. know if it had a caption yeah. or not. So that came out yesterday, and we were like, oh, okay, hmm, what's up with that? But we haven't seen, or at least I haven't seen, of course, you know, been haven't been able to give my attention to it like I want to, but I haven't seen anybody else jump in the portal. Not that I'm aware of. Not from a football standpoint. Basketball, there's been a few portal entries. And we can talk about that when we get to the basketball segment. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, Ashley says Cordell's waiting until the portal opens. Portal's open now. Well, well, and he don't have to because he's a grad. He's a grad. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he, he could, he could, he jumped in. He already in the port. I mean, he's already in the portal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, General leaves I, I think when you have we, we've seen now when you jump in the portal a second time i mean this this happened with uh uh who, who was kamari the other, stevens kamari stevens once you go back in that's kind of you know it, it just feels like you're really saying okay i i probably i probably should have stayed in there the first time but i'm going back in and this time i'm in for good i was like okay fine you know there, there's an interesting uh person in the portal who's not on the team who didn't come last time but he's from Tallahassee he's played and been all swag performer and I'm interested mm. to see what he's gonna do mm -hmm. and he would he would be a replacement for one of those guys who own the team in the portal but you don't want to get I, I know I know the guy Trey Lane who played yeah. at Southern okay yeah, played it. Uh, he played here locally. He he just he's a he's a grad student. Got one more year left. When he left the Southern, he went to what Indiana? Indiana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, University of well, Indiana okay. University. Yeah. yeah, I've seen a couple. Okay, so that's the young man that a couple guys. <laughs> there's yeah. been more than a couple guys. Nick Dixon and a few yeah. other guys. Like, hey, brother, come home, man. Come on, <laughs> come, yep. come on, come on. So they. No, they I'm know. trying to. I'm trying to remember if. Um, because one of the Langs, I can't remember which one, because I think there was an older and a younger one, started out University of Buffalo. And I don't know if that's him or if that was – because there was like two of them that were like class of 2019, 2018, had been around for a while. And somebody went to University of Buffalo, and I think another one went to USF. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. And I don't remember which one that is. I have to look that up. But it might be Trey, who started at University of Buffalo, went to Southern – 
went to Indiana and now may be looking for a school. Yeah. Uh, Ashley says we have some visit. Uh, we have some visits possibly during the spring game weekend. We'll have to look into that. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to reach out to uh, Coach Wyndham now and kind of kind of see what kind of info he can share with us regarding the numbers of people that might be coming in to visit. Um, you know, that, that'd be a good weekend. I think maybe for, for all sports, I think even, even girls basketball, I mean, given the number of, again, the number of high quality swack women's basketball players that are in the portal. Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, I, I've seen, I, Come I'm on, Alabama a and Hey, 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 look, half that roster, <laughs> half that roster is in the portal, including Amaya Simmons, who, I That's mean, the one. Hey, That's she the can one. shoot it. She can shoot it. I, yeah. I, I saw Liv had tweeted out a list of the schools that she's heard from, and, man, I, I was too. scratching. Hey, I was scratching my head like, where's FAMU? Where's FAMU? Because I know I tweeted out something saying, you know, Amaya would look great in orange and green, and she actually retweeted it. So I'm kind of like, yeah. come on, coach. Come on, coach. I, let, let's reach out. And then uh, the big girl from UAPB, uh, Pete, yeah. who was a second team, she's six six. I, I mean, there's a – so, uh, look, I, I trust Coach Gordon. She said yeah. she said people have been hitting her up. So, right. she, you got a lot of options, but I'm, but I'm sure she's got to – filter through this current roster and kind of say who who's a check to keep and who's not, you know, and I would imagine there's probably about maybe six girls that she'll probably keep and maybe the rest that she'll look to try to build on my guest. I'm just guessing. And, um, and, and, with, and, with, and with that, when you, you want to find homes for, for those young ladies too, because it helps you with APR. If you are uh, yes. moving on, you bring some in. So you want to yeah. make sure you get that credit. So you want to make sure those ladies who leaving the program are enrolled at another NCA program so you can get that credit. Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, Marcus, any other any other football news, notes, recruiting you want to add before we take a short break and then come into the basketball talk? No, no, that's about it for class of 2024. There's a couple, of, but I haven't done all my deep dive on them yet for future classes. Um, <laughs> uh, EA, good point. Yeah, EA says we don't have any money to bring recruits for visits for men's basketball. Yeah, yeah, EA. Um, if I if I told you what the numbers were from our from our campaign, uh, of sixty dollars, uh, it, it ain't it ain't good from the numbers that were shared. Uh -oh. with me. But uh, that last question is legitimate one. We Ooh. probably should address it. Uh, was it? I, I, I do. I do have somewhat of an answer. <laughs> Wait a minute. So look, hold on. Let me put up. You, hold on. You want me to put this up there now and answer it, or what? You want put, to put it up the there? Put it up there. All right. All right. There we go. The question on the table: Was it explained why members of the 2021 team are getting rings at the reception? I didn't see the whole thing so i don't know if it was ever addressed i did know that it came up in that meeting um what i would say is it was supposed to be taken care of and they were supposed to get them on a previous administration and that didn't happen and i i, I keep it right there all right oh this was mentioned at the 220 qb club Somebody asked the question. I think the, these uh, are the or this, it was these mentioned. are the rings. Are these the rings that a uh, VP Sykes mentioned that had to get paid because they were sitting in a warehouse somewhere and that bill had hadn't been paid. So, in like, in order to get new rings, you had to pay off. The, is that is that are, the, are those the rings in question? Those are the rings. Are all right. That's what that's <laughs> all right. That that's what I thought. All right, let's take a short break. I'm gonna take a real short break. We got basketball talk coming up here on the other side. Don't go too far. We'll be back in just a moment. You're watching the ONG Strike Zone right here on the Black College Sports Network. We're back. It's time for the 2024 Urban Nerd Con. Join us in Atlanta, Georgia, April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel. Special guests include 
Underworld creator Kevin Grievous, Gary Gray from Barely Odd Parents, from Nickelodeon Giovanni Samuels, the Science Machine Michael Green, the Sci Fi Sisters, and from Spaceballs and Star Trek Voyager Tim Russ. Hi, I'm Tim Russ. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Courtland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia for the Urban Nerd Con. Our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone con. I'll see you there. Live long and prosper. Visit TheUrbanNerdCon.net to get your buy one, get one free badges before the price increases. Remember, our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone's con. See you there. All right, uh, welcome back to the ONG Strike Zone. Brian, Kelvin, Marcus here. I want to encourage you to hit that thumbs up button or the like button wherever you're watching our show. We appreciate you. Make sure also that you're hopefully you're already following the ONG Strike Zone on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. There you see it in the top left of the screen at ONG Strike Zone. Uh, that's also the YouTube handle. You can go back and watch some of our older segments with some of our coaches uh we kind of separate those out from the full live show in case you just want to hear um you know the comments or the conversation that we have with our great coaches so we like to clip those and and, and maybe even some of our other discussions that we have so uh it, it's a it's a nice spot to have added to your rolodex of shows and hopefully a lot of you guys, hopefully you're podcast listeners as well, because you can listen to our show along with other shows on the Black College Sports Network via the BCSN Pod Zone. Everywhere that you listen to podcasts, download podcast, BCSN Pod Zone. All right. Uh, good stuff. Uh, <laughs> EA said, what about... <laughs> What about the BCSN 2019 National Championship team? I, I think those are the rings, aren't they? Those are the rings we're talking about. That was the national championship ring. National. There's only been one national championship since. Those are the ones, yeah. EA, right there. So, you know, uh, I was trying to figure out how I could get one, you know, since they're just out there. I mean, you know, I, that's the one I'd like to pay. If I had to pay $200, 300 I'd pay one. I'd pay for that. I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. I might be a little biased. But anyway, I, it's that one's a little more special. Uh, all right. Let's talk. Let's talk about family basketball. Um, men's basketball. Men's basketball. Yes. Yes. Men's basketball. I asked this question earlier. How many teams, how many FAMU athletic teams have won conference titles. <laughs> I'm sorry, the comments give me some time. I, look, I, I saw it and I look, I peeped down. Damn you, Edwin, be quiet. Uh, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm not even gonna put that up. Um, Oh damn, Edwin, you're killing me, bro. Um, that was the, a good one. Uh, that was a good one. That was a good one. That might have been the that might have been the post of the day right there. That one just took my soul right there. Um, how many how many championship program? How many teams or programs have won a conference championship since FAMU men's basketball last won a conference title in two thousand and seven? Did anybody? Did we do the research on that? Anyone have an idea? Let's, what, let's go. Uh, uh, an actual regular season conference title? Uh, any title, conference, regular season, or tournament. Any tournament. Let's go by sport. We can go by sport. I don't care. Since, since 2007? 2007. That's the last time that men's basketball won a conference title. 
And that was that was the MEAC tournament oh, you heard on me. a late tip in on a last yeah, I remember that. Yeah. It was against Dell State, wasn't it? Dell State was the one seed. A late it was it Brian Green Brian, or something? Brian like Green Brian from Jack Brian yep. Green. Yep. Yeah. Right uh, a late tip in. That team won 20, 21 games that year. Um, yeah. Yeah. Head coach Mike Gillespie. Uh, all right. So let, let's see. Football, uh, they won at least two. Right, uh, you had. Uh, I can't remember how many softball won. But I think they had the most. Softballs won several. Uh -huh. Baseballs won at least. Baseball won at least three. Three, two, three, three. It, uh, the shoot. Yeah, two. Golf, golf's even won how many? One or two? One we know of for sure. That was a uh, twenty. That was the last year we were in the MIAC. The MIAC, right? Um. Right. Uh, volleyball, we know volleyball's won at least uh, a lot. A lot, yeah. Yeah. Let me see. Women's basketball has probably won a couple. Um, did they? Since 2007? Uh, we'd have to look. Yeah, golf. golf's won two. Yep, thank you. Uh, Actually, women's track won one. Because I think we beat a yeah. t one year by like a point or something like that. No, no, they actually won multiple on a coach okay. Moore, Darlene. The coach Moore, the women, yeah, the mm. women did. When, so when, okay, uh, Ari Ari says women's basketball has not won a conference title of any sort since two thousand and seven. That's interesting. No, they couldn't, I thought, they, I thought they couldn't get past Howard. Ah, okay, that explains it. And, and um, they didn't win the tournament. Yeah. So. I, I, I mentioned all that because, you know, I, I just did a, a search. When we do a search of FAMU coaching history since 1980, 10 coaches, 10 coaches have led the men's program. And when you look at the number of conference titles since 1980, there have only been four. Four. Um, we've made... Three trips to the NCAA uh, and won a tournament game in the NCAA, you know. Uh, so only one coach of the 10. Yeah, thank you. Doing the math there, Edwin. Appreciate you. See, Matt, somebody's doing somebody's ready to do math today. Uh, only one coach over that 44 year span had a winning career record. One. Yeah. That's Willie Booker. Yep. From my time. Yeah. From my uh, my time too. Well, really, you know, my my first year. Yeah. From from eighty five to ninety three, nine seasons, uh, two hundred and sixty two games coached, a record of one thirty seven and one twenty five. That's a point five two three win percentage, but only one conference title. I think that was the 91 squad, Delon Turner, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Right? Yep. Right? Paul, uh Might have been Reggie Finney. Might have been his last year or so. Yeah, that, that was a squad. The 91 squad was a squad right before I got the fam. I uh, you know. Um number two behind him. Any idea who's number two behind him? I this should probably be real easy. Gillespie. Yeah. Mike Gillespie. From 2002 to 2007. Six seasons under Mike Gillespie. So Mike Gillespie, the winningest coach this century, right? 02 to 07, in 184 games coached, 90 and six, 90 and 94, uh, 0.489 win percentage, two conference titles, two NCAA appearances, and one NCAA win. All right, and I and I believe he was conference tournament champions. He didn't win conference regular season. Right. Right. Um, and crazy enough as it is, the third winningest coach over his 44-year period. McCollum. Coach McCollum. Yeah. 200 games coached, 67 and 133 with a .335 win percentage. Hmm. That's tough. That's tough. So 
again, you know, they're, they're Coach McCollum's best season. Uh, you know, I don't know if it was the 1920 season where the team went 12 and 15, 10 and 6, finished fourth in the MEAC. Uh, that was the year before COVID hit. Um, or could have been the first year in the SWAT where the team went 13 and 17, 11 and 7, fourth in the SWAC, you know? Um, and I guess the one thing that always stuck out to me was McCullum's record in conference play up until these last couple of years was always, you know, right. Above 500. At, yeah. Either at or right above 500. It was either at, you know, the one year where he wasn't was his first year where they went seven and nine in the me but every other season after that, they were above until these last two years. Um, so first question on the table to you guys, what type of program is Florida A&M basketball? Let, let's start there. What, what, what is this program that we have seen over 44 years? Thoughts? I'm going to let uh... – Marcus, Marcus, you want Marcus to go first? Because because I might be long winded on this. Uh, well, I can't. From basketball is not really my strong suit, but in terms of the investment, and I asked this question in our, it's like where do we want to be? I mean, is our investment level commensurate with where the fans want to be, and is it commensurate with where the administration wants it to be? And right now, I don't know the numbers, but it seems like outside of the teaching gymnasium, I'm not sure to what degree investment has been made in basketball, and it shows. In terms of you know, who we hire, how we hire, why we hire certain people. And so it's not being run as if it could be a revenue-generating sport. So, I mean, if you run it like it's not a revenue-generating sport, then you're basically like Division Three. Yeah. Well, when you talk about the hires prior to McCullum, we had a string of three, maybe four year one hit. I can't even say wonders, but but three year period stints. You had a you had a Byron Samuels for three years. Uh, Clement Johnson, wh whose number whose numbers retired in the rafters for three years. Uh, Eugene Harris for four years. Um, you know, you, you even had before him, well, then, let me see, before him, you had the Mickey Clayton period. So, you know, um, let me see, am I, am I, am I in right on the timeline? No, no, yeah, before him, Harris before. came after Gillespie. Harris came after Gillespie. Mm -hmm. Harry, Harris came after Gillespie. So, you know, once Gillespie left, I mean, and, and again, Gillespie's last season was a 21 win season. We ain't sniffed that since. Mm -hmm. Never, never should have fired him, number one. But, you know, politics got in oh, the way. No. I thought that was an off the field or off the court. <laughs> oh, it, it, was. It, was. It, it was. was. it was. It was. It should was have been. It, a was it a fireable offense, though? No, no yeah, probably no. not. No. Wasn't no different what the president was doing, actually. Yeah, I said it. Uh, <laughs> now, the other thing is, and I, I kept this, I kind of, um, I kept a little text file of it. I'm just skipping over that one because I don't know. Messy, Kelvin. You messy. Yeah. That at one point, there was a USA Today article, and this is way back, that um, OJ Mayo. Oh, I remember. Actually that. had us in, like, in his top 10. <laughs> And he was talking – of course, he went to USC for a year. You know, he was one and done. But he actually, you know, said some stuff like, yeah, you know, Coach Gillespie or someone in that – in the HBCUs, if they had the same talent, you know. So I was like, uh, uh. And then I was like, uh. Was that in the Gillespie era when, when mm -hmm. OJ – That's what think. he was talking about. Yeah. He was talking about Gillespie, and um, apparently yeah. there was some kind of – I don't know if there was a relation or connection – between Mayo and some of his his um, family he, and family, or he, something he was like going to be a one. He was going to be a one and done. There, mm -hmm. there was someone in his circle, in his family circle, 
that had some relationship with FAMU and Coach Gillespie got him. Remember, came from TCC and he was a like a national championship caliber coach. So a lot of coaches at the D1 programs were sending them players. So he had relationships. Uh, so he, so he was capable of uh, and had credentials and the credibility in basketball circles to be able to be in the discussion for a player who was a top five player in the country. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. And they had talked about, and I don't want to derail the discussion from current, but O.J. Mayo, and there was another guy, uh, I can't remember, there was like a three of them that were talking about playing together. But O.J. Mayo went to Southern Cal, the other one went to Kansas State, and I forgot where the third one went. But, yeah, for like a one – Two weeks over the summer, I think it was summer 2004, and it was kind of hyped up. Mm-hmm. Kind of gave us a respite from the 1A mess. But, um, I hey, look that that was a that was a that was a wonderful time. I mean that, you know, it's no, it's it's not dissimilar to what you see guys doing nowadays mentioning HBCUs. You know, I mean that, mm-hmm. and that was back when they could. I think they could actually come right out of. High school, wasn't it? When in that 03 year, they guys could that was before the NCA put in the one year rule. Mm-hmm. So right. yeah, OJ Mayo and they could have gone to a college for a year, but you had to be, you know, obviously doing something. And, and we had a we had a coach uh that was respected enough and known enough as a winner that I think it wasn't a, a crazy thought. You know, and I think the MEAC was a was a was a better. It was a, cra- it was a crazy thought for a top ten player back then. Yeah, well, well back right. then, yeah, back, back then, then. you're right. Back then, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Back then, it it, it was, but the MEAC wasn't a bad basket. The MEAC was actually a very good basketball conference. I mean, of course, you had A and T was still in it. You had Hampton who was in it. Uh, Howard, you know, Howard. I mean, they, they, no, no, no folks think. Coppin State. Yeah, yeah. Coppin State. I mean, you got teams that had knocked off people in the previous decade in the NCAA tournament. So the MEAC was very – the MEAC was probably further ahead in basketball at that time than the SWAC was, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, let's see. But, but answer your back. question. So, yeah. so, so yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer the question. Yeah. I, I think that you all hinted – to us, you know, really, it's it's our mindset about basketball. You you name the coaches we had. If you look at those coaches that we hired, how the hiring process happened, mm-hmm. the politics, the committees, so to speak, and because they knew a person, but you look at their credentials and look at what they really did or didn't do their connections within the basketball circle. See, that's the key. In my opinion, for a program like ours, with not a lot of basketball history, we have to have someone with a basketball pedigree that actually has relationships that can that people will send players to, number one. And the reason they're going to send players to this person is because they know this person is going to coach – Coach the players, treat them right, and going to win. We have tend to hire coaches because they know the person who chairing the committee, a mm. specific politician. Mm. And it has killed our men's basketball program um, for the last 20 years plus. It's killed yep. it. Yep. Which is why I'm not a big fan of the committee process as especially with this because you still have those same influences around who are gonna want to have influence on this one. Now question for you, Kelvin. And it kind of puts you on the spot and it's not intentional. But would you be a fan of following the same process we did to get Coach Gordon? I and would be okay that, with it. And by yes, that I you. mean putting it in AD Sykes' hands. I'm assuming it was put in her hands and she made the pick. Hey, you hired the lady. You let her do the do the job. Now, 
of course, I would, you know, bring bring it to the to the right people before it's finalized. But absolutely, to answer your question, I personally would be okay with it. But the sad part is we know that the the should she make the decision, she should. But we understand the credibility has been shot because of what happened in January. Let me, hey, I'm 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 say we keep it real here. So I'm finna say something, and I'm finna keep it real. I have more confidence in her than anybody she gonna have on that daggum committee, outside the coach and the player. Hmm. Why? Why? What? Why? Why do you say that? Because none of those folks know a thing about what to look for in terms of building a basketball program to be a mid-major. See, my vision of FAMU basketball, it's, it's got to be a revenue generator. And mm-hmm. not in the sense that we make we got to set up. We got to set up the fail now because we make them play all them road games against Power 5 schools just to mess, make X amount of dollars. And they don't even get to keep the money within the program that's to help fund athletics in general and so they, they they go into the to the conference season beat up bad record um no confidence got them real much. also up until recently they they didn't have summer school money so those kids weren't coming in the summer we the way we look at and structure basketball has to change the mindset has to change if we're going to be a mid-major and that's the quickest way to help our budget by the way too but we've we've got to look we got to look at it different and how we invest in it. We got to look at that differently. We still can play some some some. We got to schedule smarter. Number one, they cannot be on the road against Power Five schools ten games. We just can't do it. That's that's unfair to the student athletes and and the coaches. You all the all them bad records is all because of out of conference and what they what they're forced to do. The second thing I, I would say in terms of, of men's basketball is we have to make sure that we pack the pit and it's a priority. That means people need to know where the games are. All right. You, you got to, the concessions probably, to be honest, this year were probably the best they've been in the last 20 years. They were consistent, they were open, hmm. they had product. There was it's two of them instead of one. Our auxiliaries have to be present, man. I, it, it frustrates me to no end that the one we ain't got but like two, three home games at max in December and November, and we can't have our auxiliaries there. We can't have a pep band there. So I mean, come on, it adds to the atmosphere. And then we don't do enough packaging with tickets, like. For instance, the school across the street, they put together three or four game packages that games that people don't, you know, that they know, you know, the kids are out of town. People are not interested. It's going to be low attendance. And they made it a a, a Leon County school thing or a community thing and and, and, or or family pack. But we we have to do things to get people to our facility and when they get there they got the customer service got to be on point and then they have need to have a nice product man just think if we could just have five thousand people at every game sure. what it would do yeah. to the to wow. the budget and we could play five home games out of conference not just the conference schedule yeah. but but we got to have people who think this way who talk this way who are passionate about this to help the coaches and the players so that they can see more success. And, and you say, why well, I got more confidence in the AD versus the committee. This is why. Cause anybody who's going to be on that committee, they ain't going to be talking like this. No. Have been, has the committee been named? And only Tommy, just- Tommy, Tommy Mitchell is heading the committee according to what she said at the, uh, according to what she said at the 220 club i missed yes. i missed that i didn't hear that okay. i yes yes she said tommy mitchell no, was heading okay. the committee uh yeah along with other 
boost uh, DSO uh, well, for players, current players. I I don't know. Yeah. Okay. All right. That, that, well, maybe don't no, uh, be fully. I have to go back and look at 220, but and I guess you alluded to it earlier. I guess the um, residual effect of the football coaching search has kind of impacted the way the basketball search would go or is going. Whereas before, depending in your opinion, do you think it would have been her call if we hadn't had the whole fiasco with the football yes. search? If if because that's what happened with the uh, with the women with, yes. with Coach Gordon. She went to the search firm. The search firm came up with Bridget. I, I think the search firm came up with. I don't know that for a fact, but I think the search firm came up with Gordon or maybe helped do the vetting for Gordon. I, I don't know how. I still it's still a little foggy how the whole process with Coach Gordon came to be, um, and it's never no one's ever really asked the whole question to get the whole answer it's like we've kind of it's been danced around but nobody ever got the specific timeline to say how did coach ad sykes how did you get coach gordon's name who called you did someone call you did you go to the search firm to get it you know i so that really has never clearly been explained i don't know how she did it but she got it and it, it's worked out we love it so yes, that, that's how she was rolling, which is why she probably went the route she went when she did the football search. Okay, but I, I'm just I'm trying to I'm trying to understand. So, I don't. So understand. let me just say this. Let me just say this, and I hope this is the case. I hope that would be cover for the decision she makes. Then that would make sense. Can you say it right here? The. <laughs> The flub with football makes her think she needs a committee, but she doesn't. Well, I it may be above her head that someone has told her, Tiffany, it's probably a wise decision to have a committee so that you can sort of stay clean of it. At the end you of the what? day, you still get to make you know the what? fire. That, that, that's cool. That's cool, Brian. But can we have some fresh blood on this committee? <laughs> like who? Can Kelvin? we have some different names? Who do you want, Kelvin? I mean, they're the people who are running DSOs from, I mean, they're the ones giving the money. I mean, who, who else do you want? Regardless Go of back. whether they've gotten it right or wrong, regardless of whether they've been successful in the names that they've chosen. I mean, if you're going to have committees, you know, it, just to have names on the committee, the same names. Let me let me let me put it this way: You just gave a name of about four or five basketball coaches who had three year stints, mm -hmm. and and in a four year stint and losing All records, hor and horrible records. Never won the conference. Never, never never won the uh tournament. Right? Never, never. So what are we? So what are we talking about? You've lost the credibility. I, to, I, to, in my hey, you don't lost credibility. If you you've been a part of all them searches on all them committees, and you don't you don't hit make it an elf every time. <laughs> well, I I will <laughs> but, but not to run that, but in her defense, and I guess it would sound like a defense, is like she kind of caught in between. It's like, okay, you got burned, you got your wrist slapped for the football thing. So now you're kind of more or less pigeonholed, if you will, into the committee process. And if these same people or the same small group of people who helped or influenced the basketball search before, but that's your only resource because you got directed to do a committee, now you're kind of like. Well, it goes back to, I guess, my, my, you know, you say what's wrong with basketball. Starts with the process. And our right. mindset toward it. If we repeat what we always have done, we're going to get the what we've always gotten, the same results. I agree. Uh, the, the one thing that worries me about some of the names is the mindset. And we talked about the mindset. See, 
when she said in her 220 Club meeting that she may have a, a vision of what she thinks the men's basketball program needs, then she talks to the assistant coaches. They have a thought. Then she talks to the students, and they have a thought. And while she said some of them may be in synergy, their number one priority is all different. She she told everyone the kids' number one thought is what? Guess what, everybody? Those three letters. N I L. And and some of you all may be old school and say, oh, there's no N I L money for HBCU kids, or these kids are fooling themselves. They won't ever. Okay. You keep keep thinking that, and you're gonna see more guys and gals leave. Because guess what? That's what these kids see happening around college athletics. And so that mindset of there's no way that FAMU can have an NIL has to change somewhere. It has to change somewhere. Now, true, the athletic department can't have its hands in it. All they can point you to is to uh, the Rattler local exchange. But you know what? Somebody's got to be willing – to do some things to promote Rattler local exchange. Dr. Lori, and I, I know she's not in the chat, but I know she, oh, there she is. There she is. Doc just jumped in. I didn't see her earlier. Uh, I, someone should be doing an interview with Dr. Lori and ask her about her experience with the two student athletes that she did NIL work with. And I guarantee it's so glowing that other people who have small business will say, well, damn, I didn't know it was that easy. I didn't know it was that good of an experience. Let me do that. Right? Since, you know, we don't have, since we haven't created a collective yet, okay, and, you know, there's skepticism about the local Rattler exchange, right? We have to move to that level because guess what? Whoever the, now, and see, and I, and I mentioned all that because guess what? If your next coach is someone who is someone who's going to come in and say, I don't have anything to do with NIL, we are repeating the same cycle all over again. And we will be stuck in the mud, spinning our wheels at the bottom of the swack. Because the game of basketball and college basketball nowadays, if you want to be a successful mid-major, and Marcus, you talked about this. We are we we should probably be thinking like a stepping stone to other to other programs. Some of these names that we're going to talk about in a moment, these might be stepping stones for them onto bigger things. Look at the coach down in uh, Florida Atlantic, right? I remember one year ago after their big tournament run, hearing him talk about, "Oh, we're doing so many great things at Florida Atlantic, and we've got great NIL, and we're blah blah blah." Guess where he ended up? Guess where he ended up going a year later after getting knocked out of the tournament? Michigan. Florida Gulf Coast. Yes. That guy went to USC. Still there. Coach and Braun. You know? Junior. Yeah. Uh, Ken Kennesaw State. Kennesaw State lost their coach. Uh, uh, our guy, Overton. He lost his coach to USF. Guess what USF has now, which is really – churning out some big money they got nil collective you know why because i get a doggone email every week i don't even know how but i get an email from usf's collective guess what if he turned that program around in one summer and they're about to be a pain in everybody's tail in in whatever conference they're in because they collect your information brian i'll tell you how because they collect your information whether you bought tickets or you got passes and so yeah, anybody, I got a, I did. And, yeah, that's right. So anybody in there, and that's B? the way all of them do it. B, even yeah. BCU, I tell you, <laughs> anywhere where I bought tickets mm -hmm. and got or got passes, those athletic department they send out mass emails to to the to those people, and that's the way it should be. Um, and and I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. You know, I, I think what people people we talked about having an understanding of. I think if you guys are – and when you connect in and watch how other schools operate, and Kelvin has said this eloquently. Kelvin is always talking about paying attention to what our, our neighbors are doing. 
And we don't have to do exactly that, but even at a scale, even if it's one third of what they're doing is still significant. Think about, I'm going to just put a picture in your head, guys. Think about, we had Ariana Grizzle. I mean, she, she she's a great basketball player, uh, easy on the eyes, uh, Canadian. Great um, huh? International. Yeah, great you, ambassador for the program. Great ambassador. You imagine, you mean to tell me no one thought about doing a, a Ariana Grizzle t-shirt player of the year? Half Canadian flag, half Rattler flag, something in the background. You know, even if you sell 500 to 1,000 of those T-shirts and the student gets a portion of that back, that's significant to those kids. That's why you see guys like Jamari Gassett doing selling T-shirts, why Jalen Glaze is doing donut sales and things like that. They're just telling you to go support them because they get a portion of that back. And no, it's not. They're not doing major ad campaigns like the kids in the uh, Caitlin Clark and all these. But they're doing something within their community, and that and and so that's what they're telling us. And so if we don't listen to our student athletes, and then find a coach <coughs> that's going to merge that in with the great coaching, the community connections. And all the other stuff, spinning the wheels right back into the bottom of the swack again. Well, well, let, let's let's get into the 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 type of coaches and some names, Brian. But yes. to finish yep. off what you were saying, um, that's part of changing our mindset, how we look at uh, uh, athletics, in particular men's basketball, because I'm afraid some of the names that we coming out, those folks are used to certain things and i don't know if our administration is up to the task if you bring in some of these names you're talking about to be able to deliver these but, folks but ain't gonna mess around people with money with that this kind of money it, it, if they no. truly interested they ain't gonna mess around with with food again they're they're they you, you be surprised there are some names that, that we're going to throw out that don't have as as good of conditions as what even as even as as tragic as we make our situation sound is still better than some other places that these guys are winning at. So that I personally and I, I'm going to ask you guys in a second. I we got, think we got to change the mindset. I'm telling you administratively how we budget when they schedule these beat down games keeping some within their budget specific for their programs, um, access to the facility at better times and not, not having to come in six in the morning. Some of this foolishness got to stop. Basketball has to be the priority. We may and our coaches do too much. And then talking about they ain't winning. I don't see the first hand. I'm talking from a position a position of knowledge on this thing now. Well, yeah. And 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 I'm and I hope that I hope that if if AD Sykes listens to <clears throat> Coach Gordon being your first coach that has a chance of really being successful. If you really again, the one thing she told us when we talked to her, she knows what winning looks like. She knows what winning sounds like. She knows what winning smells like. If you listen to your coach, now that she's had a full year of seeing how things operate, she will tell you what we have to do to get to be a winning program that we can rival Jackson State in the SWAC. We can rival Norfolk State in the MEAC, North Carolina a and in the in the CAA, Howard in the MEAC. You know, she'll tell you. We, we just got to, like you said, administratively, Sykes is going to have to fight. She's gonna have to fight, yeah. and I, I, I know, I know she might be a little wounded. I mean, she, she looked wounded walking out of that two twenty club today, but, but she's still strong. She's still strong in there. Okay, but there's, there's gonna be a fight that she's gonna have to go into somebody's administration office, and she's gonna have to fight for BMU women and men's basketball programs. 
She she may need to diversify her administrative team too. Everybody can't be your buddy, the people who your friends. She needs yes, some folks who yes, yes, who got, yes, who got some relationships. Yeah, you gotta have some folks who have some relationships. Team of yes men and yes women, huh? And who who who, who know how to operate in this environment. All and right, let's go is. to some things. Let's go to some candidates because this is I know what you guys are interested in. And uh, let's kind of go through some of the names. I think one a uh, first set of names are current head coaches. Now, again, these are names that we hear talked about. We we know I'm not saying that these are all confirmed interested. Uh, but I think some are, some aren't. But the, these are the these are names that that hopefully should be considered or at least if it's a search firm that's a part of this the search firm should be reaching out to these coaches saying hey we'd like to gauge your interest in the famu men's coaching job first name out the box head coach chris wright just took langston to the national championship of the naia he's taken two schools to the naia national championship game in the last three years and anybody who watched that game the other night, I mean, that was a heartbreaking way to lose. I mean, they were up five with 55 seconds to go. Uh, didn't do a great job of handling the press from uh, that team. They, they played Friedman, Hart, Freeman Har Hardman or something like that. Uh, they ended up losing. But uh, that he had a great team. He has built a team. 30 consecutive 30 win seasons. I mean, two years ago, the program had one win. One, he completely rebuilt it. And then he actually, he rebuilt it the second year because he lost a lot of guys in rebuilding it the first year. So he has a knack for being able to find guys who might have formerly been D1, maybe JUCO level. Uh, and again, uh, I, I think I, I've talked to him personally. He's a guy who cares. Um, and he, he would make a great coach at Florida A&M. Uh, any, any, any thoughts on right, guys? You want to share anything? H, HBCU, successful experience, low resource, successful experience, makes a lot of sense. He's a champion, and he, he won't be daunted by working with the resources we have. As a matter of fact, he'll probably be happy at first. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. <At first. laughs> um, the next name. Now, this one's a. I don't know how far of a dart at the wall this is, but it may shock some of you. Landon Bussey, currently the head coach at Alcorn State. Couple reasons why we put Landon Bussey in this mix. If you, as someone told me today, Kelvin and Marcus, you have to listen to our AD to get an understanding of what type of people she likes and who she respects. Landon Bussey is a name that she has talked about, tweeted about, uh, and, and really respects for the way he does things and how he does it. Um, it was also seen at the SWAC tournament. I can con I can confirm this by eyes that shared with me that uh, there was a little exchanging of numbers at the SWAC tournament. Now, you know, say what you want about that. But, you know, we're throwing darts at a wall, right? And I also, I also know that the resources that FAMU has might be a little bit better than all corn state. Uh, I will disagree with you, Demetri, that Bussy can't win the big games. Uh, you know, what he has done is won two regular season SWAC titles. Uh, you know, maybe because of the attrition. I mean, he coaches hard. He coaches hard. Maybe guys gassed out at the end. I don't know. But I, I firmly believe that, you know, the kind of defense and the pressure 
that he asks guys to play with and the type of players he asks them to be is transferable. And uh, now I don't know about the whole, I don't know about the recruiting, but I know Landon Bussey as a coach, kind of in that Coach Gordon ilk. Like if you enjoy watching Coach Gordon coach, oh, you'd enjoy watching Coach Landon Bussey. You'd well, you'd enjoy watching him and his teams play. Any thoughts on that one, guys? Not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it. All right, he wouldn't be. He wouldn't be. He wouldn't be a. But I mean, he wouldn't be a bad hire at all. I wouldn't. All right. be, I wouldn't be against it. All right. Um. Next coach. Uh, I can't. Com- I I can't confirm that he's completely interested, but Fred Watson is currently the coach at Miles College, formerly at Benedict College. Uh, he also has served as an athletic director over at Miles. He's in his fifth season. Um, he has a. 7.786 win percentage at miles. Um, he's won postseason titles, SIC titles, coach of the year recognition. Uh, if you talk about somebody that's ready to move from the division two level up to division one, Might be Fred Watson. Not a not, not a not, got got the background. You're looking for head coach experience, HBCU experience. Successful is the key. Uh, the only the only thing I would say about that that I would personally the last check mark for me would be what kind of relationships you have with uh, the AAU circuit or the regional coaches in the high school and JUCOs uh, in Alabama, Georgia, Florida. Right. I need to, right. I, I need to know you can recruit the area. That's the only right. thing that's missed. But, but, but yeah, on paper, it would be, a, it, it would make sense. Mm-hmm. Next name. This is a name that uh, had a brief stint at Florida a and Gerald Gillian. Gerald Gillian. Currently the head coach at Chicago State University. Which made has a d- tournament, right? Uh well, they as made they, the, as they uh, independent. They they were they were independent this year, right? Yeah, they played in the uh in the tournament over in Daytona Beach. Um but He's been uh, when, when I kind of let's see. I'm gonna go through sort of a little bit of the history here. Um, coached at FIU, coached at USF, was supposed to coach at Florida A and M. He actually, before Coach McCullum took the job, Coach Gillian was actually hired as an assistant coach at FAMU in April. And then when McCollum came on board, you know, it didn't last. So he ended up at Tennessee Tech after that. <laughs> then was an assistant coach at Samford University before taking over a very bad Chicago State University program, which has – what he's done there has, has got people looking at him yeah. as the next hot young coach. Yeah, he did build a – and it, was, he has, it was a bad program. It was. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he's led them to consecutive double-digit win seasons for the first time in 10 years. Um, Who did they beat? They had a big win this year, too. Out of, uh, Northwestern. They, they beat Northwestern. They beat yeah, Northwestern. You, yeah. 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 So, I mean, they're in Chicago. Now, that Chicago State is not technically an HBCU, but they are predominantly black in terms of student population. Right. Uh, he was an ESPN coach of the week back in December after that team did win that game. Um, he has ties within the 
grassroots AAU, has strong ties in Florida, strong. I mean, you go look at his roster at Chicago State, he's yeah. got about seven guys from Florida, and I know three yeah. of them are dudes. They are ballers. Yeah. And yeah. you know what happens sometimes when, when coaches leave? Guess where players go? They follow. Uh, would be a great candidate. And he is a coach that – and young. I think he's only 38 years old, too. Yeah, he's young. He's young. Okay. Moving off of current head coaches to sort of assistant coaches now. This coach right here is Marco Bourne. He's an assistant coach at Kansas State right now. Also, he was an associate. He was also the host, associate head coach at Alcorn with guess who? Landon Bussey. Uh, Twenty-one years of coaching experience, uh, including a head coach at the high school and NAIA levels. He was a head coach at Dillard University and uh, Southern University of New Orleans, aka Suno. Uh, and I believe he did win. Uh, at, I know he won at Dillard. I don't know if he won at Suno. <laughs> What's the matter? Yo, boy, trolling you today. <laughs> oh, my God. you killing me, Edwin. That's all right. See? You can't do, you can't do right by some people. Uh... <laughs> um, but I have it on good authority that uh, – Coach Bourne is interested in the job. HBCU ties, interested in the job. How about another name that is also interested in the job? Former NBA guard, Robert Pack. Does the name sound familiar? Robert Pack? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Spent about a good 15-year career in the NBA. I remember most notably with the Denver Nuggets. But he had stints with Portland, Denver, Washington, New Jersey, Dallas, and Minnesota, and New Orleans. Uh, he got into coaching in the NBA, uh, coaching in New Orleans, the Clippers, Oklahoma City, New Orleans, uh, and Washington. He is currently uh, coaching the basketball. He's coaching in the Basketball Africa League for Rwanda. Um, so there's a guy who knows the game pack is, uh, 55, 55 years old. Another name. Now I can't confirm. I don't know if there's any interest here, but this is a name that was thrown out. Um, Corey McCray is the associate head coach at the University of Florida right now. Uh, strong AAU connections, especially in the Atlanta area. This one might be a reach because, you know, you, when you're in the SEC making ACC assistant money, <laughs> do, you, do, you really, do you really come down to the HBCU FAMU level? Unless this is a pure stepping stone. And again, stepping stone – to get to somewhere else to prove to people, yeah, I can coach. But again, <clears throat> about what I said about the program, if the program is not a stable program, you it's hard to draw people in as a stepping stone when it's not stable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here's a name very familiar to a lot of people, a local guy, Charlie Ward. Should be up for consideration, I think. Uh, we, we've talked about this. Charlie's has Charlie, Charlie had Charlie remind he is he reminds me of like the Willie Simmons thing of my whole family has family ties. I ended up going to a PWI, obviously, because it was what it was. But obviously, we know Heisman Trophy winner, uh. Played, but didn't play 15 years in the NBA. Uh-huh. Uh, been a successful coach at Florida High, right there in Tallahassee. Uh-huh. This would be an interesting hire. It would be. 
this would be an interesting hire because are we, got some- are we ready? This this are will be ready? are we ready type of hire here. Yes. Yeah. Um it, you know, I don't know. Tony said Charlie makes more at FSU high than fam you can pay. Jesus, I hope not. That's scary. That's scary. Um I I Kenya said, yeah, he's marketable. Uh, can push revenue, you know, I don't know if, uh, you know, again, the, the, now Charlie's been very supportive of NIL components at Florida State. I've seen that. Been a part of supporting collectives at Florida State. Could that hey. be a uh, Yes. And, and, and to add, now this is, uh, since we don't throw names out there, I could see if he was truly – I don't even know how, how much he interested. I know he comes on campus from time to time. So, I mean, it's not like he's not far into the south side. But uh, but if he's interested, I could see potentially a couple of transfers from Power 5 schools come in immediately. Mm-hmm. Some of his former players? One, one in particular, probably, maybe. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Um. Another name that was that was thrown out. Um. And I guess I could have put him more in the head coaching category, but he's a head coach at a Division two program, a high, highly successful Division two program. A young guy, uh, Jeremiah Samaripas. Uh, a Bartow, Florida native. Um, he currently has an 848 career win percentage, 56 and 10, uh, which is third across the entire NCAA among all head coaches with at least two seasons under their belt in the Division II. He coaches the Lincoln Memorial University Rail Splitters. If you don't know where that, they're in Tennessee. That school is in Tennessee. Um, yeah, I mean, again, uh, from he's from Bartow. Uh, there, here's a guy who uh, has has strong recruiting ties. LMU. When we talked about Division two programs. There's a strong Division two program with a great history. So, their their program is set up. They understand that guys aren't going to be there forever. Yeah. So I don't know. There's another name. How about this guy right here? Here's a real popular name. Drew Joyce the third. Currently an assistant coach at Duquesne. Duquesne, who just made a made the NCAA, got a win in the uh NCAA tournament. Uh guess what? Duquesne is doing all kinds of things from a basketball perspective. They got a new arena that's being built. Uh, they got a coach who may be on his way out. He's been there for like 40-something years. Uh, I was reading something in the Pittsburgh, one of the Pittsburgh newspapers, that they believe that he might be up for the running. They, they feel like it's really an opportunity for him to take over this job, that he's sort of been groomed to take over this job. And, and just in case the name didn't sound familiar, he's friends with that guy on the left. Matter of fact, I, I shouldn't say just more than friends. How about teammates? Yeah, more than High friends. School teammate. Yeah. I mean, part of part of the Fab Five that LeBron uh, played with in high school. Uh, I, I are mean, we ready? That that's that's the other are we ready? You bring you bring that person in. We got to operate a lot different than the way we operate. He don't need our money, but he need for us to to operate the way he need to operate. <laughs> uh, I I noticed that they uh, LeBron su- supplied shoes to the Duquesne team prior to uh, either their first round win or their second round win. Um, but again, we're a LeBron school. 
right? Yeah. We, I mean, that should mean I, something, I you, right? I bet you we're going to have to have the big Brett. Say say that again. I lo- I lo- I don't know if it's my signal or your signal. Say that again, Kelvin, just in case. <laughs> Is it my- Whatever time he said, I'm just saying. Our mindset got to be different. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, That's the list. That's just some of the names that I've been able to gather over the last 48 hours. Um, Do you guys have any names that weren't mentioned that uh, that, uh, should be on the list? Marcus, I know Kelvin's figuring out his signal issue. No. And I'm largely dependent on y'all in terms of, you know, scoping out names and things of that nature. But I, I throw um, two more names. Well, I two, I throw one yeah, more name out, Brian. Go ahead. Yeah, definitely. I'm not predicting this, but you got Nickelberry over at Florida State right now. I would not assistant be surprised. Coach? Yeah. Nickelberry's an assistant coach? Yes. Okay. I would be not surprised if his name ends up in the hat. Been a head coach at a couple of uh, HBCUs. You know, has a okay um, overall head coaching record. Um, has connections with the you know the recruiting circuit. And then there's somebody else that probably on that staff too that doesn't have as many accolades but has that connection with the AAU circuit and recruiting circuit that is definitely interested. So I know there's a lot of interest from people with different backgrounds, but successful backgrounds. The question is going to be, are we ready? The people that I think most of us are looking at will, will, will a committee see that as reality or feasible. Mm-hmm. Now, one other question I would ask, and I know we have kind of like a history, not, I guess because of Gillespie, there's some history and the names always come up. TCC has had a pretty successful program over the years. I don't know if there's any rumblings about their current coach being under consideration. I mean, it always comes up whenever, you know, whenever yeah. we have a poor record and a TCC coach, we see their team, whoever it is, going to the, yeah, going to the junior college uh, division one playoffs. There's always a question, uh, is it, can we, you know, is TCC a good opportunity to do the same thing we did with Gillespie? Because his name was being bandied about for a couple of seasons before he finally got the job because of what he was doing at TCC. Yes. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. And and add one more one more thing, Kelvin. Uh, I, you didn't you didn't mention this, but I will. Uh, there's a certain individual over at Florida State who's had a hand in selecting a couple of our former coaches. So if you if you want to if you want to lean on the the Florida State connection coming over to FAMU to do some coaching. It's very feasible to see one or two of those names pop up on the list. Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> I said it. Did, That's hey, right. Didn't even think. I honestly, I didn't even think about it till you brought it yeah, up. Yeah. I, 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 well, yeah. It's funny you didn't mention. Uh. Some other names that I heard uh, talked about are way out of left field names, but I liked it when someone suggested it. Edwin, I know you listen to the car. You, you tune in and listen to Carlos, uh, Carlos Brown show. Mike Davis, former Indiana University head coach, former Texas Southern, Texas Southern. head coach, yeah. former Detroit Mercy head coach, had a lot of success at Texas Southern. And they were they were doing what? They were getting – they would run that that gauntlet of raising money. Now, you know, the way Texas Southern was doing it is that money would go back a large portion to the basketball program. So when Correct. they were paying 
when they were playing 13 killer games and then they would get into swag play and then they beat everybody. Uh, that's what was happening there. You know? Yeah. But they he didn't go still, into those games. He, he was still staffed as a mid-major. Yeah. If you looked at and they didn't go into those games people. thinking that they wouldn't yeah. lose. I mean, they just like this current Texas Southern program now. They don't go into those power five games thinking that we can't compete. Nah, now let me let me say this though, Brian. You excellent to point that out. But from a budget standpoint, we are not the same as Texas Southern. That's true. Again, we gotta change our mindset with basketball if we wanna be on that level. Right. Uh last thing I want to leave you guys with. Uh we did the poll. We put a poll out there asking. Uh, Rattler Nation, if you guys follow us on Twitter, you saw this. Thinking about the next men's basketball coach, what would you like him to have or be? Uh, the options were Division I head coach experience, D2 slash NAIA head coaching experience, D1 assistant coach with head coaching experience, or High school winner with connections. Uh, before I read the results, what do you say, Marcus? What would you like this coach to be? I want someone who can develop players, and it's going to be a little not going to be one hundred percent what you say. Uh, I don't know if. HBCU experience is super critical, high on my list, but I want someone who can develop players and winners. Okay, but that, at what, no, that wasn't one of the four choices, but I like what you're saying there. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. where, where do you want hey. him to come from? Because uh, I think that I think that matters. I think that matters. Let me let me let say, me jump in. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I'll say HBCU experience because you also have to be able to build winners, but also understand the culture and the and the and what you're getting yourself into. You can't come in with eyes wide shut and thinking everything's going to be the same if you come from a place where a lot of things are already laid out for you. So so does HBC in your mind does HBCU experience mean is it the same as having D one? experience or is it the same as being d having d2 naia experience because hbcus are on all three levels a winner's a winner yeah I, that's what i'm, I'm I, looking at but i mean i don't know and like say if if chris wright got it he's an NA, naia right but you see he's a turnaround artist and my thing is uh, uh, and i want to prolong it because it's getting late but I mean, you and I have been on, been on this thing for 10, 15 years about the launching pad, cradle of coaches. So, you know, if you show that you can be a turnaround coach and you can bring in players, put an influential program and win, you know, that's going to be translate anywhere. So if you translate that to FAMU and hopefully you know, go against any headwinds that have already been embedded in the culture for the last 20 years, then turn the program around, start to win, and launch on to the next thing and make sure the department and the program is set up to receive the next coach so that he or she can be successful in coaching. Okay. Kelvin. Jesus Christ. There we go. Because you all you, you, you pretty much have to be you, you have to be everything um at HBCUs. <laughs> but but on on a serious note. Um, and I'm just be frank. If, if he's serious, and he was definitely interested in the job, you would have to go with uh, J uh, Joyce the third, just because of the Le LeBron, the LeBron um, relationship that the school has, as well as that he has. It, it, it would be stupid not to, and and he has enough credentials where it, you know. You gonna you rolling the dice? You don't roll the dice with a lot less. You just named the guys we had previously. So 
Um, so, so, so that's probably if he was truly that interested, you you would go that route. But uh, uh, of course, Langston's coach is is, a, is to me is a no brainer. Winner is a winner. Uh, Charlie is an intriguing choice for me. Uh, I, I think a, a lot of the list that that we 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 kind of put out there today they make sense. I, but for me, just judging where 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 our budget is, our mindset in terms of our administration and so forth, I think it's really important to have that relationship with the the AAU circuit, the junior college circuit, folks who who can recruit talent, who already have relationships, don't need to fan you brand to bring in talent. That just helps them bring in the talent. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody, somebody, I'm gonna say it. Somebody who younger. Yeah. If you look at the ages of the coach suite and hired the last five times out, over fifty. Push no shade. I mean, no shade because no, I mean no. we, we love our fifty year olds, but, but yeah, yeah, but 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 yeah, we. I, I'm looking for for a little younger, hungry hire at this point. Mm-hmm. I like that last word. And, and crafting it, just like I said, like we talked about before, if you're going to craft it as a Cradler Coaches launching pad as a mid-major yeah, and fashion it that way that, hey, we know we might be able to keep you two or three years, build the program, make it successful, and we'll promote you or, you know, when you go to the next big job, you know, it reflects good on us. Get a young coach who can relate to the players, who's shown the capability to develop, and scout talent and win. Forty-seven percent of the people in the poll said they wanted someone with D one head coaching experience. Uh, a second was twenty-three percent Division one assistant coach with head coaching experience. Well, McCullum had that. Byron Samuels had that. <laughs> hey. Didn't uh didn't what did Eugene Harris have? He had never been a head coach at, at that level. Okay. He just he was just on staff. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah. So hey, we we've gone we've gone that direction with the last two hires. Um I I EA said so. From NEIA to D1 playing P5, he will be a winner. Wow. Uh, are we, when you say we're – again, what I tell you, EA, we're just, we're just wearing a, a D1 suit. We're not really a D1 pro. We're not a – you know, I don't know what you en- envision FAMU basketball to be. We're not a true Division I program. We're just wearing a D1 suit. We don't spend money. And, Oakland hey, – Oakland uni- hey. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Didn't we lose all Albany State? This that's year? why I said. That's why I said what, we are. A what are we talking team. about, people? We, that's what. I, that's why I, you got to guard about. You got to guard against who on this damn committee. Yes. And, and, and it was Clement who came from Alaska Anchorage. He was. A, he had been a head coach too. Yeah. yeah. Being a head coach at D1 level is don't mean nothing if you weren't a winner. None of those guys were winners. A winner is a winner. I stand on that. You know what winning looks like? You smell you you know what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it smells like. That's it and that that translates. That carries over. I you know and when when we are just wearing the 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 suit of a division one program but operating uh, again, I, I'll say this and I'll say it for the last time. The the school, Oakland University out of Detroit, Michigan, who defeated they Kentucky. Budget, they, they, budget, they made talk about it. Hey, they, they $2.3 million basketball budget alone. But the overall budget of the athletic department with 19 sports, no football, was $17 million. Let that sink in for a second. Basketball was 2.3 of a $17 million athletic budget. And we and we are and we upset at our AD for trying to balance an $8.9 million budget. Come on, man. Stop it. Stop it. So when I say we're a division, 
we're operating like a B two NAIA. Yeah, that that's that's about what we're at until it until it changes. Until it changes. All right. Um, any final notes? Any any last words or anything you want to get in, Marcus? Before we close the show. No, no, I'm good. Uh, anything or anybody you want to shout out, Kelvin, here before we shut it down? Um, just want to say shout out to tennis. They beat Southern over the weekend. Yep. And uh, also track had a couple of good performance. DeRozier doing his thing again. Uh, so, uh, so four by one, to... four by one uh, women's uh, yep, one yep. there, one at the FSU relay. Yeah. So a lot of our coaches and our teams are very competitive and doing really good things. And so we continue, we need to continue to support them both financially and with our presence. And then we just we got to continue to push our AD, our administration, and our president, and our leadership. We got to push them. They got to. We got to have this athletic capital campaign. We appreciate Eddie Jackson and the million dollar campaign that they launching. Mm-hmm. But we got to have our administration, our inside folks, to do that. We got to get this thing straight with uh, our 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 people who you know, Liffy or whoever we're going to do business with to do our marketing and our inventory. We got to have, we got to have professionals, man. People going to go get it. I, you go know, getters. Bottom line. Yeah. Bottom go line. Go getters. That's what yeah. we need. Um, hopefully, uh, if you guys are in town this weekend in Tallahassee, or you're going to be in Tallahassee, those of you in Tallahassee, uh, get over to the baseball complex. More kittles. Uh, even though we we drop two of we drop two of three against Bethune, uh, the team is still four and two in conference play, third place. We host Jackson State this weekend, so uh, this is this is a good this is a good important series. Yeah, uh, we need we need to get we need to win this series against Jackson State. Uh, Jackson we, State is uh, like seventeen and six. Yes, they have a very good overall record. I think I think they are first place. I think if I'm not mistaken, yeah, Jackson State's first place unbeaten 5 and 0 in uh in in SWAC play. So, this is a real important series for baseball. So- and softball got a big series too. Yeah, softball is in Daytona Beach again Friday night for one Saturday noon and 2 o'clock. Uh, against uh, battle for first place, two eight and one teams tied for first place. Somebody's going to be standing alone in first after this weekend. So, plenty of great action on the diamond. Um, I don't think. Let me see. I know I put it in there. Uh, golf is off. Tennis. Uh, I think tennis has a match this weekend too. I think that's against Bethune as well, if I'm not mistaken. I'm just thinking of the schedule off the top of my head, but I think they have Bethune. I don't know where it's at, though. So uh, double-check FAMUathletics.com. If you haven't downloaded the FAMU Athletics app, go do that. That's real important. Uh, real important that you go do that. Um And uh, one final... Let me see. I uh, had it up. Go check out the. Did I post that link to the uh, uh, to the uh, um, FAMU DRS? Did I post that in the chat room? I didn't see it. Um, all right, I'm gonna post that in here real quick uh, for you guys to go support. If you want to give a, a small donation, any donation that you can to support the uh, FAMU girls basketball program over at uh, FAMU DRS, 
uh, you can do so. I'm going to post the link here. Uh, it's the FAMU Foundation. So all you got, you go to the FAMU Foundation and you just scroll down and you'll see FAMU DRS Girls Basketball. <clears throat> Make a donation. Uh, we really got to step our donation game up, folks. Again, I saw the numbers from the uh, women's basketball $60 campaign. Uh, very short of what could have been. Very short. But uh, you can still give. You can still donate to the girls' basketball program in any denomination, especially some of you if you're getting your tax money. If you're getting tax money, go ahead and put in some donations now. Go support these programs. Again, we have to think, we have to start doing more with more. And so that starts with us. Starts with us. Ten, tennis is at home against Bethune at 2 p.m. And right. track is in Gainesville at the Pepsi Relays. All right. All right. So that, that's a lot of places that our Rattlers are at. So if you if you get a chance to go support, you can. I know some things you can watch online, like I know the tennis is streaming to YouTube on uh, streaming on FAMU Athletics YouTube. Um, hopefully, Rattlers Plus will be working, and you can watch the baseball series. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if, I don't know if Bethune is streaming softball. Um, so that's up in the air. We'll have to kind of keep keep you posted on that, but. Uh, Go download that FAMU Athletics website. Uh, you, you can't go wrong if you subscribe there. All right, uh, that's going to do it for tonight's show. Thank you to everybody in the chat room. If you got any questions, you want to send us an email, you can always reach us, ongstrikezone at gmail.com. There's our Twitter handles as well. Excuse me, our X handles. You can always hit us up on X. Make sure you're following the show at ONG Strike Zone, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Go download the uh, BCSN Pod Zone. Every podcast platform that you use. Thank, thank you to Coach Erica Cromarty for joining us earlier, and for uh, for the guys, <coughs> for Marcus, Kelvin, I'm Brian. Appreciate you guys. Bangs up. Strike hard. Strike fast. Strike often. Peace out, everybody. Have a blessed Easter weekend. Um, yes. And uh, and we'll see you uh, next week. Wear your most colorful suit. <laughs> Pink, purple, red. You know how we do. Big hats. Ladies, big hats. Big hats as well. And, and, and gators. And gators. <laughs> All right, y'all. Be well. Peace out, everybody.